Be right, Neil. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as The Midday Show. That right there is a girl at Dara, and I am Sharif, and we're gonna wait for everyone to migrate on over from the other stream. And today, Adara, I do have the chat loaded up, so we'll be able to do the show. We already have Chase Bands, and we got one of the OGs in the chat, the crazy stitch lady. We got Mark Sniper. We even have a Dara in the chat, believe it or not. Hold my beer. Yes, I see you, Bob Dub. You are number five. We got Charon. We got Hamster. Hold my beer again. Sofa Monster. I see you, sir. Gary B. Pillsbury Xing. Tanner Braun. We got Sebastian. Matt Huggins. Uh, Mateus Lane. Big Kyle Burdett. He likes your outfit, by the way. Thank Shout you. out to Air Bears versus Bulls. Alvin. Ronaldo. ND Trade. Sam Chung. We got Aryan. We got Kanye East. Dan, the man, Emmons, putting his levels there for the future in the chat. Check that out. We got Adam Deleuze. We got Ragu. We got Naps. Jonathan, can, can, I, can I? Sorry, I didn't, hope I didn't mean to butcher your name. We got Ryan, Bright Awakening, Henry Chung. We got the gauntlet. Good morning, Adara. Good morning. How are you this fine Tuesday? Not too bad. Not too bad. I got better sleep. And, uh, you know, we're involved in some trades. We'll be talking Ooh. about that. But I do see a whole lot of lines. And someone was very proud of herself for having drawn the correct lines. And so you were bang on with some of the charting today. Thank you. Yeah, I drew these. Um, sometimes what I'll do is right before I go in the big desk, I'll pull up my, I'll get my Pro 8 open. And then if I see any charts I like on my side chart, I will start drawing lines on them and see how they go when we leave the pre-market. And actually, these NVIDIA lines are not that off. We had, um, this is just kind of that earlier area that we had a little bit of a trough at 877, but some of these later ones ended up really coming to fruition. We had a little bit of a dance there at 866 uh, around when that fall, we had that fall where Sean was cursing NVIDIA's name, which is honestly pretty relatable. I'm sure even I were both saying Fair that as enough, well. Yeah. Then we have this other line that ends up kind of being around where the 9 EMA is at 865. So obviously they're not all usable or perfect, but they, they, they kind of give me some levels. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased as punch that these levels from the pre-market from before 930 ended up mostly coming to fruition or being of some value to me as we head into the market. No trades as of yet, just seeing what's out there. Going to probably be be visiting the Cybertruck, see how that one's going. Yeah. What about you? What are you looking at? I'm in Apple right now. Long 94s. It's like the fourth trade on Apple. <clears throat> uh, most of them have been profitable, but <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what's going on in my voice, but we're obviously getting some sort of resistance at Bless the you. whole dollar level right now. I'm talking about 175. Uh, seems to be an issue. Hidden seller or an iceberg there because there's just not enough size on the book to warrant holding up with the amount of volume that's coming in. So we'll pack our patience and see what we get here on AAPL. It's been a decent couple of days after that uh, new uh, collaboration with Google and Apple going to work together to incorporate Gemini, uh, their AI, their generative AI into the next iPhone. We'll have to see what that iteration looks like IRL. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's leave that. I've already got my stop in place. Um, and I'm looking here at the 10 EMA on the five holding for Apple. That's what prompted me to get into this. And there's also a hammer candle that dipped us aggressively down into that half dollar area. I was already long 77s and I wet my beak on the approach of 75 and there goes 75 to the high side. We're gonna get some out here at 15s and let this one run into the north side here. Uh, 75 goes on AAPL. HOD right now though on AAPL is 37. So some way still 17s ain't gonna cut it. Let's see if we can make it up into the half dollar uh, level on Apple. This, uh, sorry, I digress because um, I had to take profit there. But this was the hammer candle that really got me looking at Apple here. Look at that aggressive dip holding up right at the 20. But look at the closing print above the 10. The, the buyers were like, no, you don't. You're not going nowhere, bro. Up you go. And so that is typically, you know, I'm just being facetious, obviously, but that is essentially what a hammer candle is showing you, the exuberance of buyers, overwhelming sellers, and it's really nice when it holds up at a key level, either a moving average or a price. So that's, uh, that's where we're at right now on AAPL, and we're about five pennies off HOD. That was quick. So now we're nicely in the money on this bad boy, about 40 pennies. Let's see if we can get into that eight that half dollar area on Apple. For whatever reason, 33 is acting as a level of support, the one third area, we'll see what we get. But today, the lesson, yeah, because this is what the show is called, it's called How to Trade. 
Uh, we're talking about re support and resistance pullbacks, guys. We are talking about pullbacks all week. Um, and today, I think this is one of my favorite uh, lessons because it's really something I do believe in, support and resistance and them flipping back and forth. So let's talk a little bit about this lesson right now. Oops. Uh, sorry about that, just had to load up my... Um... So the basics, the, the basics of pullback trading is great. That's what we talked about yesterday. We gave you like the ABCs, the one, two, threes of pullback trading, that's fine. But what if you could add an extra layer of confidence, question mark? Support and resistance uh, do just that, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's build on some of the basics that we talked about yesterday. We already know pullbacks are essentially temporary dips or rises, in the case of a short, against the prevailing trend. Support and resistance zones are price levels where the price has bounced previously. Most of us know that. Imagine visible line, invisible lines on a chart, support stops, the price from falling too much, resistance stops, the price from rising too much. So let's just get that out of the way for anybody who missed the lesson or doesn't know what support and resistance is from yesterday. So identifying the sweet spot, this is super important. The magic happens when a pullback coincides with a support or resistance level. Here's how to spot them, all right? Number one, Look for a trend, and we're gonna be talking about the long in this case, so we're gonna be talking about an upward trend. So look for an uptrend. You're looking for higher highs and higher lows, okay? Look for the, the troughs to be higher than the previous trough, and the crest to be higher than the previous crest. Okay, that's what you're looking for there, all right? Then identify what you believe to be a previous support level where the price has bounced before. That could be a level that, you know, is at the, the whole dollar level. It could be a level that was touched multiple times, but in a random area. Go and do your homework, whether on the 15 minute or the hour or the four hour, find where that support level is, okay? And then if you're gonna look for a short, you're looking obviously for a downtrend, right? So similar, uh, similar to uptrends, you're looking for lower highs and lower lows, find the previous resistance level. So now to the high side where the price could not ascend above and actually reject it off that level. I'll be showing you examples of both of these in a second. And thank you for adding those, Adara. Uh, and then the pullback arrives. So you've ID'd, you've found the trend, you found either support or resistance based upon whether you're going long or short. Now you want to wait for the pullback, the actual pullback to arrive. So now watch for a price re retracement in the current trend. Does it reach the identified support or resistance level that you ID'd? If it did, well then bingo. That's the support and resistance pullback, okay? And that's where you're gonna be looking to get in. So here's a great one for, uh, Support. So look, the ascending, uh, ascending, um, sorry, uh, trend line. And what you're looking for here is consecutively higher highs and higher lows. And then you're waiting for that low to come in. So look at this area, for example, over here, just below 35. I don't even know what this is, but look where we come right back down to. So yes, it holds up at the trend line, but it also holds up at a key price action area right here. Okay. So that's what you're looking for. And then here is an example of a downtrend line, exactly what we were looking for, lower highs, lower lows, the retracement comes back into these areas where we rejected off in the past. So that's what we're looking for, identify areas of support and resistance. There's also obviously a confirmation advantage which comes with using support and resistance for your pullback trades. So support and resistance add a layer of confidence, at least they do for me, because they've acted as historical turning points in the past, right? The pullback reaching these levels suggests the trend might resume after a short pop. Look for support in an uptrend that is, and resistance in a downtrend around moving averages as well. Very important. Trading above or below these levels can further confirm the strength of a trend. If one of these levels moves away from the support or resistance level or vice versa, it can warn of a potential reversal picture coming up right here. So here's what we're talking about. We got the higher highs, we got the higher lows, but then uh-oh, it had always been holding up at the 15 EMA and then it gives up the ghost here on the 50 EMA and then look what we get, we get an actual retracement. What's up Katina man, what's going on? Oh, okay, okay. The Katina man is short Tesla baby. So if you're following with the Katina man trade, be made aware short Tesla and keep your eye on more Trader TV 
the Katina Mans and the Neils trades are on that channel as well, in case you don't know about more Trader TV. So great example here, Adara, thank you for pointing this one out. And then let's talk about entering and exiting the trade. It's all great, it's all gravy to figure out where the support and resistance lies uh, in a pullback, but we gotta figure out how to weasel our way into the trade, as I always say. So if you're going long, you're entering a long position, which is a buy, obviously, at the support level in an uptrend pullback. So you're trying to ID the level first and foremost, and then you're gonna pack your patience, sit on your hands, as a Katina man said this morning, and wait for that level to come in, have a resting order if you don't wanna monitor watch the entire time, and wait for that level to come in before you take the long. Contrapositive is true for the going short. You're entering a short position, which is a sell, obviously, at the resistance level that you've previously ID'd during the downtrend pullback. So you're gonna pack your patience, wait for that level to come in before getting long. Now, there's umpteen amount of ways to weasel your way into this. You could basically get in a quarter of the position at your area and then look to get in the, 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 the majority of the position at the pullback area. That way, if it goes, it doesn't go without you entirely, you get a quarter of a position. You can figure out any other way uh, using this method that works better for your style of trading, okay? To me, I, I sometimes go either way. Like I'll get a quarter position where the current price action is and I'll put 75% of the position at my pullback area, the support and resistance zone. That way, if it goes, I get a piece of the action. I don't sit there on the sideline watching. That doesn't work for you. If you want 100% at that level, have at it, baby. I mean, it makes no difference to me as long as it works for you. So we talked about going long, we talked about going short. Now we're gonna talk about exiting. So exit when the price breaks above a key resistance level for the uptrends, for the longs, or breaks down below support um, for the downtrend in the case of a short. So one thing I negated to mention was in, a, in addition to identifying those key areas of the support for the pullback, you're gonna have to identify key areas of resistance from which to take profit, right? Because if it comes into that level, there's a, more, there's a greater chance than, uh, than you know, another, Okay, so what I'm saying is, if the price action comes into that resistance level, there's a better chance that it reverses off that level than any other level which isn't resistance. That's what I'm trying to say very uneloquently, okay? And here is, um, here is um, a pro tip for you guys with respect to divergence, and I used a little, uh, little tidbit from uh, the Obe, the yeah, one, the Kenobes. The sauce. Exactly, for extra sauce, you look for divergence. Now, you, you know Adair and I have been talking a lot about RSI price action divergence, MACD price action divergence. That's what we're gonna be talking about here. So combine divergence with your key uh, indicator from a technical indicator like RSI, for example, for a stronger confirmation. So you're looking for, in the case of a long, you're looking for bullish divergence. What is that? You're looking for bullish divergence on an uptrend where the indicator rises, but the price is falling. So you see the, the um, RSI making higher highs, but you may not be necessarily getting higher highs in the price action. That's a leading indicator, and it could indicate that the price is really gonna break up here, especially if you're getting divergence from the RSI, making higher highs and higher lows, and the price is going to the downside, okay? Not making higher highs. The opposite is true for your short, bearish divergence. In a downtrend pullback suggests a potential selling opportunity. And I'll show you examples of that in a second. So if the price is making higher highs, but the RSI is making lower highs, that's a bearish divergence, and that may be time uh, to really look to get in nicely there. So keep your eye on those. Uh, perfect examples there, Dara, thank you. Here is bullish divergence, where the price is making higher highs, and the RSI not so much and the opposite is true in this case where we're making lower highs and the RSI not so much there. But remember guys, support and resistance are definitely not foolproof. Anybody who day, day trades knows that. Prices can break through them absolutely and sometimes does. We call these fake outs and always use stop losses to manage risk. Can't stress that enough. Uh, yesterday I used a stop loss on Apple and it didn't work, so sometimes you need to be monitor watching as well. And here's a little just, you know, kind of way to wrap your mind around support and resistance. Imagine the support or resistance levels are these magnets. A pullback towards them is like the price being drawn back in potentially for continuation of the trend. With support and resistance pullbacks, you can trade with a bit more confidence, and I hope that is what we helped you do today by knowing exactly what's up there.
Yeah, no, I think I think that's um that's certainly really key, the support and resistance. And that's one of the first things as well that I kind of learned through being on the midday is the whole idea of higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows, seeing this pattern where we have either a trend line or if you're playing off an EMA or a defined level and just kind of waiting to see a continuation of that. If you move out of that, maybe we have a bit of a, a reversal on the horizon or just something to watch out for, right? There was a, a stock I was looking at, was it AMD? That earlier uh, was a good example. Yeah, I think it was AMD. AMD here, uh, Throughout the day has been a really nice example, um, couple, with a couple exceptions here, right into the open, of just you know respecting this uh, 9 EMA as a point of resistance, right? So if we do curl above that, then maybe it changes. But right now, it's kind of just continuing to to blissfully dance below the 9 EMA. Also, how is this name down six and a half percent? Wow. But yeah, that's just that, that's just kind of one example, right? We love the in, the wild examples here on how to Pain. trade, believe you me. So yeah, that is, um, the, the AMD is, I think, uh, a fun example of that, uh, just dancing around the 9 EMA. And that's also the reason I got in on the short. We did have a slightly higher uh, low here, which made me a bit nervous, so that's why I wanted to get out entirely by 178. Took the last of my position at 78.10, took some of it out here around 78.27. So, uh, but, but like, you know, an actual in the wild example of me shorting because we came into resistance at that 9 EMA. I wait, waited to see that resistance hold, hold, and then I got in. So, yeah, I think like, it, it can. Obviously, you want to use confluence. You want to have a lot of other factors involved. And you want to make sure you're planning your trades, especially in this case with this AMD situation. Knowing that I had the higher low, I really had to plan that accordingly. But at least my entry point was based at least partially on this rejection of the 9 EMA. Also, uh, I'm still in Tesla. We're trying to get out. I said I'm still, but I don't even think I talked through that trade. I got involved in the Tesla long because uh, the goal, I, I missed the dip buy here. The dip buy would have been off the 9 EMA. Can you tell this is a level I like? No, I'm joking. But uh, that was going to be the dip buy <laughs> opportunity. And I said, you know, we'll wait and see if we dip into it. If we dip properly, we add. If we dip below, I, I dip out of the trade, but no, so I got involved at 171, took out some of it at 171.20, which was that earlier line that I drew because we had some support there. I'm trying to take everything out around this 170, 170.160 area. We'll see if we get it. If we uh, keep bouncing back at that 171 area, probably add some shares. We'll see. It'd be a plan DCA. But right now, my only plan is to hopefully watch this roadster go from zero to 100 to the upside. Real quick. How, real like quick. It. Shout out to Drake. <laughs> How is Apple going? It's doing like nothing, Adara. It's, it's definitely having trouble breaking and holding above 175. We had a couple of breaks. Uh, the, the high one here comes into 37s. The one right below it comes into 35s. We keep getting to that, um, you know, 75 area. Look how long this consolidation has been now at 175. Again, you get these perfunctory breaks, and then you get the price action pulling the price below 175. So I think... You know, if we don't get a break and hold above 175, this looks like a, you know, a double top that may be uh, brewing in the works here. The only thing that really is showing me a different view is the consecutively higher lows with that 175 acting as that resistance level. It's not a strict resistance level in the sense that it's broken. Yes, we've been above 175, but the magnetic effect pulling Apple back into 175 is, you know, is is unquestionable because it's exactly what it's been doing all day here. And it's doing that as we speak right now. So trying to pack my patience, see if we can uh, ride this into uh, a high a day. It is also sticking to the 10 EMA. So that magnetism that we've talked about in the past with the price action and some of these moving averages coming into play right now on AAPL, you're looking at all the closing prints above the 10 EMA for now. For now, because this candle has me worried. We already had a doji, which is a candle of indecision, and now we're getting kind of a second doji over here, all after what could be a possible double top and definitely resistance at 175. So, you know, the share size that I have right now, and it allows me to hang out and find out. I used to say that all the time. Remember on my morning videos? Oh, hang yeah. Out and find out. Hang out and find out. <laughs> Ram, Ram always didn't like those. She's like, no, no, I like She's denying. She's yeah, like, I, know, I never right? said that. I know, I'm just putting words in your mouth. But yeah, 175 acting as a level, we'll see exactly what we get with Apple on to later today. Now, the, the other trade I'm looking at is Google. So kind of moving opposite to one another, Google was up big yesterday on that collaboration with Apple. But look at this. Every single time, subsequent to what, 930, or no, say 935, any move into the 20 EMA, which is the yellow solid line on my chart, has been sold off. 
All the while, we're kind of accumulating in front of this 146 or thereabouts flat bottom break. It could be an FBB, baby, today. We could FBB. get an FBB, right? We got BPI behind us, and we know we have FBB right here, flat bottom break, right? Uh, BPI is big patty ice for anybody that's wondering. He sits right there. Patty, say hi to the people. There he is, baby. Um, so that's what we're looking for here. A lot of weakness on Google. And, um, you know, if, you're, if you don't want to wait for that flat bottom break to come in, what you could be doing is setting up dip shorts at the 20 period, right? Maybe with your out above the 50 period. Because let me tell you, the one time it broke the 20 period right over here at 1030, that wick didn't make it into the 50 period. And now the 50 period is farther north than it was at 10.30, so uh, Google could be an interesting short here unless we really find a solid area of support at 146. So we'll keep eyes on GOOGL, maybe set up a dip trade or two. Apple now above 175, I'm not taking anything out there, I'm just gonna leave that. But I happen to absolutely love the idea that Adara is in there. Are you still holding Tesla? No, you, I got out because okay. we were really struggling at the tape. Um, I, I was just gonna big you up on this oh, trade, and the you. reason I liked it because well, look at this consolidation area near pivots that we had all morning. I know you charted that. I know you charted it. And then we got right back into that area after bouncing off. Yes, you guessed it. Resi or support level one on pivots. So I do like this area. And if we continue to print, maybe above the 200 period, which is the blue solid line on my chart, maybe we'll be interested in a, in a Tesla long here. But that was a re nice recovery off the bottom, especially getting above 170. How's that NVIDIA trade doing, Adara? I'm actually pretty happy with it yesterday nvidia chewed me out spit me up um stole from me whatever uh dramatic phrase you want to use i had a really bad day with nvidia yesterday but i don't want to hold grudges against stocks okay. right as much as amazon and i do not get along i'll still try to trade her if, if something comes up you know what i mean with this nvidia i was noticing these are these pre uh, these lines that i drew earlier today and i noticed you know i don't know if, it, if it's kismet or what's happening here but every time we get to one of these lines we see a little bit of a pullback and we have a little bit of a bottom here at that uh, 464 50-esque area. We're having a little bit of a hard time getting it now, mind you, but I have a really small share size, smallest position I can take, really just trying to get um, out at the bottom of this area. I get to get everything out there. I really don't have enough to even kind of parse out. I was going to say parse out blame, but that doesn't make sense. Parse out my shares. Uh, no beak wetters. The beak will be dry until we get to that area, although the scalpulating is kind of telling me we may have to get out around 560, uh, 865s. And honestly, I'll, I'd be pleased as punch with that. I'll, I'll take like a, a dollar in the sim, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I am in the sim as I continue to learn every day, though. As I was saying to Sharif, if I do feel a little bit com more comfortable with my trading uh, heading into the end of this week, I think maybe we will try to uh, enter the real world. So I'll have to Whoa. see. We'll have to see how big that goes. Big steps, baby. Yeah, I like I mean, it. Got to take baby steps into the big steps. But yeah, that's the NVIDIA scalp. We're holding up really well around 866. Uh, so I have no issue. We're trying to, to come towards that now. So, you know, we'll have to see if we stay in or out, NVIDIA. If we break above that earlier area, <laughs> That would be a higher high, which means I have to say bye bye. Hola. Hola or um, adios. Yes, how are you, yes, how yes. are you doing? Good. I mean, we're below 175 now, but I, I mean, I'm not surprised because we just kept finished talking about how 175 is a resistance level. So just because you get five, 10 pennies above, it doesn't mean you've cleared the level. All right, let's go and have a look at these small cap gappers. And sadly, I didn't set them up today because the chart was taking awfully long to load up. So. Uh, let's pull up WORX. That's the one probably a lot of people had eyes on. Um, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you this one in a second. But right now, for me, if if you believe in uh, the uh, the rules uh, that uh, these are not my rules, by the way, for small cap gap or trading. I, I took them from somewhere. They're not yours. No, of course not. Oh my gosh, I thought they were like your patented rules. No, no, no. I that's not. I'm not going to pretend like they are. I take. I took them from somebody. And um, so essentially, what the rules are for small cap gap or trading, definable pre-market high. What's up, Katina Man? This is more important. No, no. Okay, no, no, okay. Short He's short Tesla still. Katina Man short Tesla. Um, so with respect to uh, small cap trading, definable pre-market high, breaking above the pre-market high after the bell and trading above the volume weighted average price. We have two check marks there. We're missing a third, but we, 
we could get it quite soon. Uh, the volume weighted average price, 341. Now this is printing 343. The fact that it dipped below VWAP is not that big of a deal. It doesn't end the discussion. It just has to reclaim it on a closing basis. So let's watch this one. WORX, let's give you the details on that. Wow. $4 million market cap. AMD's on the way down, says the Katina man. And I'm, it's about 7%, man, 6.85%. I'm talking, the Katina man is short 185 on AMD, and now we just printed 177, guys, 36. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's a hell of a trade, bro. Um, great trade on AMD, and that's selling big, I'm assuming, in sympathy with AMD after the, uh, yeah. Now, after the NVIDIA conference yesterday and Jensen dropping hot lines on the keynote. We'll get more into that later as the, the, the trading slows down. But with respect to WORX, Ram Ram, uh, this one's going to have to get above 350, uh, ideally that 360 area because of this wick, before we start trading it. Uh, it is a $4 million market cap. The float is 1 million shares, a little bit over 1,050,000 shares. So very small uh, keep in mind that this is, I believe it is a former runner. Let me double check that on the daily. Yes, it is a former runner. You can see by these huge outsized wicks, we were running. We had big boy days back last June. We, all had, we had more big boy days in September and uh, multiple ones earlier this month, actually, over here. These were decent days. So WORX, we'll keep eyes on that. Then this one is a holdover from yesterday. L-I-C-Y. What is this one all about? It is called Lie Cycle Holdings. It is a $325 million market cap, much larger than WORX. The float also exorbitantly larger than WORX, 130 million share float. We are above the pre-market high. We are above VWAP. We are even well above yesterday's price action and even the high of yesterday, which was a quick wick into 130. We're well above that. This is a great looking name. I feel it might be a little extended. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six green five minute candles in a row. We are getting away from that seven EMA. So when these small, uh, 10 EMA, when these small cap gappers really start, you know, leaving the 10 EMA behind, I feel it gets it too extended and we need to pull back uh, to trade this. But L-I-C-Y looking awfully good at day's highs as we speak. This one, a runner from yesterday. And let me just have a look at some other small cap gappers here. We also have F-U-S-N, but that's, uh, you know, it's given its first uh, couple of letters to a lot of traders today because I believe this one is a buyer. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second. That was a really good one. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that is rude. My bad. Um, it, this is a buyout, guys. So unless you you know how to trade buyouts and you want to get into a buyout trade, leave this one alone. Uh, it's a sideways move. We'll keep eyes on some of these other names there. Yeah, no, this is, um, yeah, yeah. Fusion certainly uh, getting infused with that <laughs> buyout uh, opportunity or or chit chats, but yeah, that nice look there. Nvidia, I guess, decides that there's nothing, no life without Winzy, because right oh. now it's at 869, and we got there from that 864 bottom. So that's a, a massive five dollar move up. As I said, I was kind of watching these lower highs, lower lows. We got to 864, we got slightly below, and then we flew back up. I did get out of this. I know I said I was going to be waiting for 864.40s ask with the opportunity to, to do some scalpulating. We did do some scalpulating at 865, so we took approximately a dollar in the sim on this guy. But yeah, this NVIDIA move up, because I was, you know, I had my fingers at the ready. I said, if we pause at 866 again, why not try this again? Very happy I didn't. This is, you know, patience because, and that's the one thing that I've really learned with range trading and, and why I, I'm trying to get more proficient in it because it really does teach you, you can't stick to an idea if the idea is not working anymore. Bang. It'll give you a couple times. It'll give you a couple, you know, goes around the merry-go-round or the Ferris wheel or what have you. And then it's like, no, that range is over. You got to move on. This, this, these lower highs and lower lows are really something on NVIDIA, but we're still failing that earlier level of 870-esque. Also, Tesla continues to be fascinating. I did jump out of that trade, but it's interesting, too, that you said this consolidation we had pre-market that I was charting was also on the pivots. Because I've said this before, no. I feel like it's interesting how sometimes these levels that I'll chart, I'll be like, oh, this, you know, I like this level. And then you're like, oh, it's the pivot. So it is interesting. The pivots aren't always going to come into play, but I have noticed there's a lot of confluence between levels, even just like on my little baby levels that I'm charting. And you'll be like, oh, that's a pivot. So, so I think that's kind of interesting. 
I don't have anything on Tesla right now, but this 90 MA bounce, we talked about support and resistance. I think there's a, a Scotia support here at that 9 E to the M to the A. IBM says the stitch lady. So let's take a look at IBM. It is on the NY Adara. Come on. Um, but yeah, so let's look at, at IBM. This is a this is an interesting one. Spread is about three cents. IBM I found to be incredibly spready at times. IBM, wow, IBM continuing to push to the upside here. Really strong volume. These gorgeous five-minute candles. Let's take a look at I to the B to the M. Is there any news? Not seeing anything. They got a price target increase last week. I know they announced some job cuts last week in communications and marketing, uh, but not, nothing I'm seeing today. Really strong volume. We're still below a milli on I, um, IBM. We're at about uh, 850,000 shares, but you know, that reminds me, another name with a kind of similar ticker, IWM, uh, which is one that I trade occasionally. It has recently had a regular, regular recurring space on my side charts. I would say it's there semi-frequently. Trying to break even here. Oh, and this has been a really nice long opportunity. Like I said, though, with these ETFs, I'm trying to be less reliant on the charts and more reliant on what's happening in the book. So if I see a level I like on the book, I'll watch the chart when we get, or if I see a level I like on the chart, I'll watch the book as we get there. And that was how I was able to kind of scalp this guy yesterday. But I, I, I don't see anything yet. Higher highs, higher lows. I need to wait for that opportunity. Um, Ahmed, Amwala, thank you so much for the 729 Super Chat AED. Uh, UA is my only long-term uh, coin, my choice today. Yeah, let's look at UA Under Armour. Let's see, let's see how they're doing. Are they all suited up for battle, Under Armour? And I know it's a long-term place, so it's a little bit different, but yeah, I mean, honestly, kind of kind of a stutter step to the upside. We have about a million shares, nothing too shabby, but let's take a look at that coin. This is more just out of curiosity because I haven't looked at that chart in a while. Let's look at Coinbase, see what kind of basis we have on coin. Oh, this is an interesting look. Cause you had that really beautiful short, you had that bottoming tail candle saying, uh, 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 sellers. <laughs> Time might be over, right at that 217, swoop to the upside swoop. from there. Uh, swoop, there it is. But the area that I will be thinking will be a little bit interesting will be this uh, 225.39, hyper specific. But look where we had that base earlier, right? I think, you know, like I said, these guys do tend to respect mother Bitcoin that more than they respect any kind of chart patterns. But we're gonna have to see what we do here because that was, I think, a, a big area of support. And as we know here, we just talked about it today, support and resistance are finicky creatures oh, we do yeah. need to be aware of. No trades for me right now. Uh, NVIDIA breaking above 870s. You wanna Meta look at Disney? looking kinda nice. Because Disney? Nick's yeah, up, let's do it. Disney's up and to the right. Let's do Disney. Yeah, I know Disney we were talking about earlier because single largest individual shareholder, um, George Lucas of Star Wars fame, um, basically saying that he stands by Disney and Bob Iger in their proxy war with Brooklyn Beckham's father-in-law, Nelson Peltz. Did you see what he said too? He's like, Nelson. magic is not made by amateurs. Basically <laughs> calling the Peltzy uh, an amateur. You know, I mean, yeah, like that's... that's a shot right there. Jeez, tell us how you really feel, George. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, you could take Disney and, um, you know, Disney Star Wars to the Jar Jar Banks right now because this is a <laughs> nice move up here off that that nine EMA. Um, we're up, you know, 0.5 percent on the day. This is a really nice look. Volume, it's it's Disney, so the volume is definitely nothing to sneeze at. There, about 70 or about. 2.77 million shares, so nice look. I don't really have an entry on this, but it does look like if you kind of have these pullbacks into the 9 EMA, there seem to be some opportunities. Right that, that now, though, if you're looking at the five minute chart, there has not been a pullback to be found since we began the midday Bang. or the how to trade at 11. So what a look. And Neil Roberts saying he almost choked on a piece of pineapple just now. <laughs> so um, there we go. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, just, just trying to just kind of a little bit of puns there. But yeah, George Lucas, bringing Disney some strength there, uh, taking their lightsabers to battle into the uh, Nelson Peltz yeah, ongoing Google. saga. What are you looking at? Oh, I see Google. I'm Google short because it came into the 20 period. Now, um, I have to be careful with this. Why? Because the market's pumping. We broke through 18, 150, 50 point level. We're also getting a little, uh, little heavier on the green volume here for GOOGL. So, uh, I'm not going to just take it out willy-nilly. If it makes a new high uh, above a key crest, or uh, yeah, a crest, then I'm out. Simple as that. So, uh, got in initially at the 70 MA, added at the 20. My line in the sand is the break above 75. So this one continues about 10 pennies higher, which it looks like it's going to right now, because it looks like Google is in a bit of a micro, uh, micro pump here. 
uh, for whatever reason, uh, we'll, we'll get this out. So I'm going to put my stop at the one, sorry, 146.76. That's going to be my line, 10, 10 pennies right now from where we're at. Otherwise, it's going to have to break down and uh, reject the 20 period, which it had been doing essentially all morning. So the fact that it's not right now is an outlying event, but you can't blame me for getting in a trade uh, based upon what I've seen so far on the day. So if the market rejects off here, I think Google will come down, but that's not guaranteed. So keeping my eye on GOOGL, looking for that 20 EMA rejection on the five. We'll see what we get. Um, some people talking about NVIDIA and the volume that's coming in on NVIDIA, and they would not be wrong. Absolutely accurate on this. Let's look a little bit here at the five minutes. So we had declining volume, declining volume all morning, and then boom, these two candles come in. I'm talking about volume candles, sorry. Come in and make obvious new highs from the previous uh, red and green candles, and that took NVIDIA above 870, where it had actually found resistance prior to that at around 1045.11. But now looking to break above that level, and it looks like it's on its way into 875 or thereabouts, uh, which is where the 200 period is hanging out on the five. But to go green on the day, it's about $6 off green, which is like 60 pennies on a $10 name. I'm, I have no idea what the equivalency is. I'm just making statements. That's the IB high, 877.76. That takes us into high day ter territory. But to go green on the day, excuse me, I misspoke, 884.60. So quite a ways away, which is right below pivots. So pivots is hanging out at 885.40. Uh, go green 884.60. So we'll see whether or not NVIDIA can continue to pump. Uh, decent hold here. I don't want to call this a double bottom, but it does kind of look like a double bottom. I got in an NVDL trade because of these wick shimmy dance levels at 850. Let me show you exactly the trade I'm talking about right now. But before I do, let me just explain to you why I got on this trade. So remember how we talk about the future wick shimmy dance? So say we're retracing down into 18,000. If we were to see these candles at 18,000, that to me would be a long. Why? Because we keep dipping down and then there's aggressive buying, pushing the price right back up. And you don't see it on one, two, or three candles. You see it on multiples over here. So every time you know we got closer to that 850 area, people were buying this bad boy back up and... If I was to see this kind of look on the future, we'd be getting long. But um, let me show you the trade on NVDL, which I got into because of that. So there it is over here. That's the kind of the wick shimmy dance we were doing. Got long at 37.60, and we wet our beak through the break of 38.05. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot earlier than the show. So that was the trade on NVDL, which is a trade on NVDA, I guess. Oh, nice. So, it's a nice look. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not too bad. The, beak, the beaks were wet. The beaks were wet, Adara. That is true. All right, G-O-O-G-L, coming back down. Yes, baby. Let's wet our beak for a little profit over here. Let's see if we can make it back more down, Adara. I am pleased as punch for you. Thank you. I, yeah, that, that trade should have you tickled pink. It is a very <laughs> nice uh, look. Yeah, someone last week was saying, why don't we say tickled pink? So, yeah. you know, we can. I have no problem saying tickled We pink. love phrases here on how to trade. Made I know that is probably too. shocking, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, oh, yeah, all jokes aside, congrats to that on that Google trade. Thank you. I got involved at AMD. Uh, I did the start of this AM dance with AM Danger because... We had this area earlier, that, that 179.20, we had a, a scotch of a wick to the upside that we couldn't fulfill. That was going to be my stop on that AMD short I had earlier. We never got there. Then I get involved here in this short, and basically what I was noticing was, however, was that we were actually maybe starting to flip to support in 179. So I said, Adara, let's get some of those shares out uh, in the 10 cent club. Uh, and, you know, just, just kind of leave there also because I was like, you know, we, we kind of moved above that 9 EMA as resistance. We're talking about resistance support today. How much of a hypocrite would I be had I not done that? Then I was like, if we continue to reject, you can just get back in when you see that continued failure of 179.30, right? So uh, in the end, I, I didn't have that opportunity. We, we fell nicely. We got some of the profit out. I'm noticing some stagnance around 65. We're kind of struggling on the book. So we're going to get out there. Scalpulation uh, is really when I have, I have a plan. I do like this getting out of the 9 EMA area if we bounce off that because I think that could be support. But I'm also always willing to finagle my way out of a trade if the trade tells me, nah, uh, uh, Dara, we're not going to go where you thought we were. And that's why I decided to get out at 65s. So please just punch on that. Can
continuing to, to trade AMD. This has become one of my favorite names lately. I like it. I don't it. know really uh, why why that kind of came to fruition, but I've noticed it's, it's had kind of a regular place on my side chart. And speaking of my side chart, another name that um, I haven't looked at in a while, uh, volume right now, and this is bad, but let's take a look at Eli Lilly just because I'm curious. And then we can look at Novo, which I find if you want to trade Eli Lilly, sometimes Nova Nordisk can give you a little bit more oomph. And because it's not a $700 plus dollar name, the volume is often a little bit spicier. Right now, Eli Lilly kind of chopping and churning, not too much, especially with that volume. So we will keep it on the side chart, but we'll not be considering it right now. Nova Nordisk, though, let's see what you're doing. This one, ooh, this one's down on the day. Maybe a little bit of support around these 130, 120 areas. You know, Sharif jokes sometimes that I'm a bit of a, a GLP-1 tra trader. I do like trading <laughs> these GLP-1s for whatever reason. And I think it's because as well, we're talking about volatility in certain times for different markets. And I think we certainly had a lot of volatility in these names around when I started trading, which is when we started getting those approvals for ZetBound and, and the weight loss drugs right. and everything, right? So that's why I really, um, I think because I became introduced to them in that way, that's when I started uh, kind of getting interested. But all of that aside, I think Nova Nordisk could be interesting if we get up here. We do have volume over a milli, and that's what I need to see in Lily before I get involved in that. Yeah, I, I, don't, have, I don't have much now, though, that I'm out of that... Um, AMD. If AMD keeps doing some rangy stuff around those levels, I'll keep dancing. I like it. All right. Let's take uh, some more profit if we can on GOOGL. If we get the print there, we'll have to wait, pack our patience, uh, see if we get that print. It's doing the dance right now with 39s, 40s, or thereabouts. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know. Uh, it's interesting here why Google's, uh, Google's weakness is coming in on the day, yet Apple is... Kind of the opposite charts here for whatever reason. So we'll keep eyes on that. We'll keep eyes on that. Uh, all right, let's see what else is going on. Softy, you heard, uh, I think, the big kahunas today were talking about the strength of Softy. And uh, I don't, I'd never heard of a headline today. Did you hear anything uh, Softy headline related? No. I don't, I don't either. And I'm looking at my blotter, nothing coming in. But Softy, up and to the right, um, on the day above yesterday's high, breaking through resistance level one on pivots, 421.67 HOD at the moment. Um, and, you know, it's been a fantastic trade for anybody who's wanted to take this on a dip trade, a pullback trade, on the 10 EMA. You get the initial pullback, 1020. You even got one, maybe even 1030 over here. Then you get a, an actual touch, 1120. And now we're touching right now. So there is a, no, I was going to make a dumb joke, but I'm just going to leave that. Uh, where we're touching that, we just touched actually, sorry, not touching. Uh, we touched 42060 was a touch at the EMA. We're above that right now, 76. Let's see if we can continue to hold the 10 period moving average for Microsoft. It's been a decent day uh, for Softy um, today. Really, really no headline. Ragu, Sharif, Adara. What market driving keywords should be we be listening for when Powell gives his speech? Higher for longer. No, I'm kidding because we joke about that all the time because the point is, uh, you know, we were anticipating being in, uh, in an elevated interest rate environment uh, going into this year, but then we got the dot plot, remember, in the, uh, the later stages of 2023, which kind of put the whole, uh, the whole idea that we'd be you know, higher for longer, maybe in question because we're forecasting three cuts, then the market for whatever reason extended that three to six and whatever. So what I'd be listening for is uh, whether he says higher for long, he's gonna say data dependent, he's gonna say all the, the key words that he's been saying for the past two years. Really, what would I be listening for for Jerome Powell? I would be, I, I think what I would really be list, looking for, not even listening for, I wanna see the dot plot tomorrow. So we get a new dot plot tomorrow, and the dot plot changed everything last time. In case you're wondering why the NASDAQ has been up and to the right lately, a lot of it has to do with the interest rate forecast by the FOMC members last time around. Not last time around, the time, the December, was it December meeting? It was. Yeah, it was it a was December, December meeting. meeting. That was Thank the you. one, the dot plot heard around the world. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, the dot plot heard around the world, or seen around the world, because oh. you gotta, you got to look at the dot plot. That's but true. good call. Um, anyway, so that's what I'd be looking for. Um, to be honest with you, I wouldn't really be looking or listening to anything specifically that he says. He kind of, he's an expert at this now, you know what I mean? Looking uh, how to weasel his way out of questions. Big Kyle Perdet. Jay Powell inflation is transient. 
Yes. Yeah, he says that or transitory. Too. He said transitory, but transient's a synonym, so it's all good there. Uh, picky eater. JP saying price hike for a swing. Okay. Look, man, I'm an XLF, so you're not going to tell me that, uh, you know, obviously I love JP Morgan. I think they're a monster. You heard the Katina man talk about JP Morgan in the, in the same fashion. Josh Brown was posting on his Instagram, JP Morgan's new building in Midtown Manhattan, and it's supposed to look ridiculous. It's like energy efficient. Look, man, I think uh, JP Morgan, you know, whether, whatever you make of them, they're big time. Dan the Man Emmons. 18068 to 18368 range mentioned yesterday and today. The rally off the lows at the start of RTH Open has us about 33% back up. Sounds good. Great analysis there, Dan. Thank you very much for putting that in. Dan the Man Emmons, keep your eye on um, the stuff that he posts there. Big Adam Deleuze, good afternoon. <laughs> I guess, is that what you're listening to for for Jerome Powell tomorrow, or are you just? Okay, I gotcha, it's all good. Jerome Powell, my bad. Um, I thought it was JP Morgan, my bad. Thanks, Ram, Ram, for that. So, picky eater meant uh, JP, as in Jerome Powell, not JP Morgan. Because uh, you said swing, so I thought you were talking about trading JP oh, Morgan. Oh, yeah. You know, you can't really blame me for thinking that. All good. Nick Dub, could you give me a little help on my swing off 43 entry for MLTX? It sets up like KRYS, which has made a huge breakout off a of flat top. So I can look at um, MLTX for you. Let's bring in the side chart and have a look at MLTX. The Chilean nightmare sent me something. I have to look at it. MLTX, let me look at this first. Okay, I have no idea what this company is. What's your price? 43 entry. Oh, so you're like well in the money. You're $6 in the money here, nice. dude. Yeah, it's not bad. Let's look at the daily and uh, have a look at MLTX for Nicked Up. MLTX, here we go. And, um, okay, so obviously a bit of a range-bound trade here, Nick. 65, definitely to the high side. There's no question in my mind about that. That takes us all the way back, to essentially, June of last year. 65 has been a level. Now, for the most part, too, we had that 50 area as a level, okay? But we gave up the ghost a couple of times. For the most part, I want to say it was a $15 range, but we gave up the ghost here. In November, I can almost tell you for certain that that was a earnings day, this November 6th day, just based on the volume and based on the price action, it was likely an earnings and the way that it got bought up subsequent to that. We always see that with earnings. Look at Pan W in case you're looking for an example, big sell up, then a buy up after earnings. So 50 seems to be support previous. Now, kind of acting as resistance. So previously 50, was kind of the area that we bounced off. But since we gave up the ghost, I want to say around right here, March 1st maybe, give or take, now 50 acting as resistance. So what I'd look for, Nick, is a break and a hold above that $50 area on a closing basis. And if you really want to get a uh, gangster with it, look for three straight days to close above 50. That would make, give me a lot more confidence. And then if you're going to get above 50 and hold above 50, you know, history suggests that you do range at some point into 65, and that's plenty of money. You're long 43, right? So 65, that's a $23 winner. I mean, uh, sh chapeau to you, like hats off. I like that, chapeau. <laughs> yeah, my, my old man always says that, man. Let me get me started, because I'm working with my old man a lot because of, the, oh, yeah. of the, the thing, right? He speaks uh, French. Yeah, and uh, he has so many French sayings, too. It's so funny. But yeah, this is a fantastic look, um, Nick Dub. If you can break and hold above 50, that's the key. You got to hold above 50, and then I think you could, uh, you could, you may be able to see 65 there. So I, uh, I hope you the best, man. Hampton Trader, sorry, Adara, I know that I've been talking for a no, long time, okay. but no a couple worries. of tags. No Hampton Trader, I have a question about the NQ. Why is it that when new contracts is in place, the price is about 200 points higher? That's a very good question. That was covered in the book. 
by John J. Murphy, technical analysis of the financial markets. He has an entire chapter there about contracts rolling over and the math that's included or that's done in the rollover process. I'm not smart enough to be able to repeat it to you, but it's, it's there. The, the information is there if you want to go look. John J. Murphy's book is all over online. He has an entire chapter about contract rollover and the math that is done to roll from the, say, the March contract to the June contract. Again, not smart enough to tell you, but uh, I'm sure you can figure it out yourself. Adam Deleuze, if JP says good afternoon, markets go higher. If not, we pull back with a higher for a longer monetary policy. I love it, man. Uh, sound, shout out to you. I will be listing for good afternoon tomorrow as Papa Powell will be dropping hotlines at 2.30. Indeed, he will, as he as he is wont to do. It, it's what he does. He drops the hot lines. Also, um, you know what old is not dropping hot lines? I don't have a good transition for this. I'm in this Apple short. It is a nail biter. Someone was saying Apple's about to tip to the upside. I think so too. But when I entered, I entered because look at this beautiful semi range we have going on here. We had that area of resistance earlier that 174.80. Then it became support. I was like, ooh, I see something. I like something. Then we come into the top of that. That 174. 530. I got involved. I, I thought I was getting involved in the back end when we were kind of at that red candle here, rejecting. I got involved at 175.21. I thought, oh, kind of reputable position. Then I noticed we can't get below that 175.14, uh, which is why I drew a line there at that highly specific price point. Because also, look, it's where we had a little bit of a, a chop and churn on that way down. So I think that that's kind of a, a nice um, look. What I have noticed, though, my out is going to be decisive break or my stop, sorry. Decides to break above 175.30. We can't really do that right now. We, we get to 175.31 and then we come back down. So every time I'm about to leave, Apple's like, no, 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 no. We're not Tim cooking yet. Stay. So I'm like, you know, okay, Apple, I'll be nice. I'm not reloading. Uh, I'm not adding into this, even though, of course, my, my point of entry is like, eh, the 175.20. Uh, but right now, I really need to keep it skit stay down to the downside at that 175.30. I don't disagree, though, with the people saying that this could be a long, and I say that because look, we do kind of have a bit of a flag situation, right, in this kind of chop and turn to the upside. However, we're risking about 10 pennies here, so as long as it doesn't break above that 175.30, I have no reason to leave. I see you have a very entertaining meme loaded up here, though. The Chilean nightmare. Well, the entire production team is undefeated. We, we always mention that. What's up, Katina, man? What's going on? Short 874, I'm assuming it's NVDA, obviously. And the Katina man now is, uh, oh, yeah, just a measly $7 in the money. He's going to do the walk and talk. He's going to hit the floss. The Katina man is printing over there. He's walking in. He's walking out, taking trades. There he is. Walk and talk time? I, I always want one, bro, and I listen to them every day. Yeah. So uh, walk and talk time, baby. All right, here's, uh, here's the uh, meme, Ram Ram. Interest rates will be higher. For longer, interest rates will be higher for longer. Interest rates will be higher for longer. Rate cuts by the end of the year. Atta boy, Joey. Let's go, bro. Matt LeBlanc undefeated. And, uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. Oh, yeah, that, that's one of the first um, episodes of Friends I ever saw. Oh, yeah? Actually, I think maybe the first episode of Friends I saw. So, remember that je m'appelle Claude, be ba blu bla. So that's kind of what, that's what that's a reference to. Is like, he can say the pieces separately, but when he has to say it together, he can't. Uh, and that's okay. like, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. But, um, but gotcha. yeah, so, pardon? I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. So, Apple, uh, maybe we'll have to take a, a cool uh, four pennies on this, I think we're going to have to do. Um, oh, never mind, we're keeping dropping lower. Okay, Apple, do your thing, 21. We're going to get uh, my regular, uh, originally planned beak wetter ready to go for some of that position at 175s. Cal Perdet also mentioning the range that I had my eyes on earlier, and that is A.M. Dizzle, as you sometimes call it, or AMD, another Sharifism for this <laughs> one here. But look, we do have uh, this support at 178. I'm going to watch and wait for it to hold a little bit better because sometimes I've noticed it, it'll kind of take you down to 177.60s. But yeah, I want to kind of also extricate myself from Apple. But this AMD short, uh, I'm mostly taking it short, but this range has been incredibly fun. So thank you very much, Kyle Burdett, for reminding me of this one. I need to keep an eye on this. Also, yeah, thank you, uh, people, for the hair um, and outfit shout-outs in the chat. Much appreciated. Also, someone was um, mentioning here, too, uh, 
telling me about VRTX. Kevy, yeah, thank you so much. Do you ever look at VKTX? It's in the same space as Lily and Novo. I actually have traded VKTX. Remember, you and I were both fighting with Viking Therapeutics that uh. first day it ran up because it got into a nice range. Today, this is actually a really nice look. Better volume than Novo last time I looked at it, and certainly better volume than Lily. Thank you for pointing this one out to me, uh, Kevy, because I did trade this the one time, and then kind of it fell off my radar. But the spread on this is about 14 pennies, so certainly less iffy than Lily, and honestly, sometimes less iffy than Meta's and NVIDIA's. So can't complain here. Sharif and I have talked ad nauseum lately about how bad Meta's spread has gotten. Like, bless you. It's like you can start calling it spreada now. So, um, so yeah, I think this uh, VKTX, this is a, a nice bounce off the 90 MA. This slightly high, lower high concerns me a little bit, so I want to wait and see what we do here. But if there's some dip buy opportunities, we talked about finding support and resistance levels. This, to me, is a nice support level, so if it continues to hold up, don't mind if I do. We might have to fight with the Viking. Right now, though, we're waiting for that apple beak wetter to get um, dunked in the water here. I think he said this so 175.01s and it got to 175.02 and decided to bounce. Okay, do your thing, 21, I guess. But yeah, I chose this level too because A, it's, it's around that, that whole dollar level and B, we had some chop and churn around this earlier. So I thought that could be an interesting level to get some out. Did you see the guy online that brings, brings Drake's uh, security guard at his house a coffee every morning? No. It's hilarious because like, okay. All right, so Drake, uh, he has security outside his house, right? Which, I mean, that's normal. Yeah. I told you, like, at a Friday and Saturday night outside his house, it's like a club. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of, like, normal for Drake to have, like, lots of, uh, yeah, you know, pageantry and stuff outside his house. But there's a guy who's always outside in the cold. And the reason I'm talking about this because you brought 21 into yeah. this. That's his song, right? Yeah. And there's a guy who's outside in the cold, and this guy drives by Drake's house every day, so he started bringing him coffee every day. That's amazing. And it's now it's like a running gag between this guy and the guy um, who brings him coffee. Guys, out of Google, please, this dang punch on this trade. I, I stayed with my plan on this one. It was a rejection of the 20 period on the five. Uh, there we, we just wet our beacon right now through the break of 146.25. We had originally gotten short at 39s. We added at 58s, and now we just printed on 25. So I'm very happy about this trade. Look, it's not a big money maker. That's for dang sure, but it's about just getting the reps in and not getting rinsed like I have been on a multi-day basis uh, as of late. No, that's not, that's not a fair statement. I didn't even get rinsed yesterday. I ended up day green, but uh, I just gave back so much of what I had made, so I was kind of frustrated. But there we go. Google seems to be like a Nadera Panera trade right here, baby, where it's just kind of ranging, but Adara, it was making lower highs, and that's what prompted me to get short off that 20 period, which is the yellow line. So we'll see if the Google can end up giving the ghost at 146 because it's been holding up 146 pre-market or, or after the bell. It doesn't really matter. Look at these holds here. Uh, this is at 7.30 a.m. with like no volume, but the fact of the matter is there was a buyer sitting there at 146 in the pre. So we'll have to wait and see if we can break through that level. Google down 0.92% on the day. Definitely uh, a little worse off than the NQ, which is the NQ is down half a percent. So Google outperforming the NQ, not in a way that you'd like though. All right. In the exact same way that Google is kind of like a hockey stick pattern where it's down and to the right, Amazon is an upside down hockey stick. So we're getting another possible range trade here on AMZN, but in a completely opposite way. So where are we bouncing off here? I'm asking myself out loud. So we do have some 20 period touches, but I got to tell you, the, the level that I like better than the moving averages here is pivots. And that's the green dotted line on my chart, not the solid line, the dotted line. And so we've been bouncing off this 175, which is also pivot point. So you get the 175 and pivots. There's confluence between the two. That's what you like, um, or that's what I like for a, a range play long. Now I can use 175 to the downside as my support. So in the same way that I tried to take Google in that way, I'm going to try to weasel my way into an AMZN trade here. It hasn't made its way down to the volume weighted average price, so I don't want to use VWAP right now, but if VWAP gets into 175, it adds that extra layer of confidence, in my humble opinion, uh, to get a nice dip trade at the whole dollar level. As soon as I'm done yapping here, I will be going on to AMZNs uh, and looking to, uh, to put in a dip trade at that 175 level. All right, let's have a look at some other stuff here. Anything uh, to my liking at the moment? Not really. Uh, 
except the future. The future is trying to break above 150 again. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see what we get there. Wow, what a move back up on Google. For now, I have bottom wick. So that may not be the, the case the rest of the day, but please just punch about this trade there. Yeah, this has been um, a really exciting day. We did um, get out of the Apple. We also got back into AMD. Uh, shout out to Kyle Verdett. We were, we were chatting about this trade. I had only taken this range short earlier today, and that's why I was really hesitant to take it long. I didn't get a great point of entry either. 178.20 was A, I was kind of impatient, and B, I saw the move and was like, Get, jump in, Adara. Um, if we keep these bounces <laughs> off that 178, I'll add some more at that level. Hence, why I took out some of the position because I wanted to, you know, give myself a little bit, of, a little bit of profit, just a, a slightly, you know, damp, dampen the beak a little bit. But I will be saving um, a piece here. I, I'm going to be out entirely by 179.30 because look at that resistance earlier. However, I'll be watching to see what we do at 179. If we struggle with 179, I'll take my profits there. I am, I am not picky. However, we did get out of Apple, and I want to chat about that for a second as well, because, um, yeah, basically what I was noticing is I, I was happy we got some of this 175 area out. Then I got out here because I was noticing we weirdly had some support at 175.14 of all places. So we came back into that. We eclipsed that. I said, bye, Adara. You're getting out. Well, I didn't say. I said, bye, Apple. I, I'm still here, and I am me, so it didn't really make sense. <laughs> but, yeah, this honestly, this 175.15 to 175.10 range, maybe if I take it with some shares, that could be a little interesting. I'm going to have to spend more, way more time staring at that, though, before I decide to get involved, entangled in that. Right now, though, AMD requiring all of my attention, this AM dance with AM danger. And um, also, thank you so much. We have two super chats. Sudakar, oh, thank you so much for the five dollar super chat. Sharif and Adara, morning stars. Neil and Sean, you're doing a great job. Keep rocking. Thank you so much. Yeah, shout out to everybody on your team as well. Brendan, killing it. Um, oh yeah. Fabian and Ramin, Mark, Rob, Randy, everybody of the guys in the back. Um, I always sound like I'm giving an Oscar speech, but yeah, we just have a really fun team over here. Absolutely, and also, also big. Kyle Burdett, Sharif, spend the money for homegrown chicken and homemade jerk marinade cooked on charcoal. All right, bro, that's a whole lot of talking right there, baby. We're going to spend the money one more time for you, big Kyle Burdett, because I do like the money spinning thing, and I did harass Sean that is documented to spend the money when I was a viewer on the show. Shout out to you, my man. Uh, what did Ram Ram say? <laughs> she wants the chicken that Kyle's talking about. Yeah, she's like, I'm serious. She's like, you know. Definitely want to say. Marinade, my man. Sorry, marinade, marinade. Yes, 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 I know. I get excited around here. Sometimes I'm reading a little too quick. I gotcha, I gotcha. He's marinating that chicken, and Ram Ram wants some of that chicken. So that's all that we're saying about that. Let's flip back, though, and have a look at um, Meta. I mean, you heard Neil talk this morning about that 487 flat top on META, and he could not have been more accurate about that, my friends. Look at the incrementally higher lows, and then you have that flat top, and the flat top, the thing about it is, it's hanging out at support, or sorry, yeah, support level one on pivots. So it's nice when that comes into play. And then, the thing about it is, once it breaks 487 and a half, in this case, on a closing basis, it now uses it as support. So look at the closing print over here at 1045, once it closed above 487.50, it didn't look back. And it started using it as a level of support. So su resistance in this case, as we typically talk about, flips to support. So let's see what we get right now when we get into pivots. Because that's hanging out at generally that 493 area, 493. It's also an area that we did a bit of a consolidation area, uh, consolidation dance, excuse me, in the pre. From around, say, 7 a.m. to that big boy Hwadunk that we got right before the bell there at 925. So 493 or thereabouts gonna be an interesting area for, uh, for me with respect to resistance. But we also have this area over here. Yeah, but we're already past that area, that's fine. So we'll see what we get on Meta. Meta, nice recovery, V-shaped recovery off the bottom there at 48128, and now we're $10 higher than that at 49118. We'll talk about that and many other things when we get back from Neil's lesson of the day. Today, your lesson of the day is going to be about mental agility. So if you're not sure what that term is all about, it's being about versatile trader. So you ever wondered why LeBron is like the second greatest player of all time or what, makes, what made Michael Jordan great, what makes 
you know, some of the some of the biggest stars that you've seen on stage. What's fantastic about them is a good actor is good in every single kind of role. LeBron can beat you with a step back three. He can take it to the dish. He can pass. He can play defense. Able to do many things because you don't know what the game is going to throw at you. So the best are always able to roll with whatever situation it would be. If you're a UFC person, you've got to be able to handle multiple styles. It's all well and good to be good at grappling, but if you've got to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against somebody, you could find yourself in trouble if you don't have that versatility. What it means for trading is there is nothing wrong with having a good idea. Good ideas, good levels, good setups, and all that good stuff. But if you don't have the ability to get away from them when the market's telling you something else, then you are limiting yourself. You could do really well at one thing in trading. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are days where the ability to switch it up, the ability to flip your perception, the ability to look for a different style of entry than maybe what you're accustomed to is going to save you or make you some money. So, you know, a lot of times we start with an idea of how things are going to go and you want to have that bias but some suggestions for how you can get away from that and maybe take advantage of being a little bit more mentally agile. So I'm going to start off here. I mean, you can see Mars down 4.5%. Anyone, anyone at the time of taping and looking at this, let's be real. Bitcoin had a big pullback. It got to like 63,000. You were gapping down on Mars when I sat down in the pre-market, and you were down about $1.60 or so, and you were essentially just looking for fade trades. Now, obviously, what ended up happening was a fail breakout at the open. I'm looking for opportunity to short. As you can see by the line I drew here, I was looking for a short, the pop into 19 even. So that's very, very specific. Like, I've, I thought if we retested higher, you get from here into this range, and that's where I wanted to be shorting into. I've seen rip, uh, rip face moves um, and like that, and that was my anticipation of what could happen. It starts going at the open. It's like, okay. We're starting to get in that range just before it enters the area that I want to get into the short. It curls and flushes. So this is the first step of being mentally agile. If you're looking for a short, and I like that setup getting into this 19 area, and it doesn't get there, well, I can, I can sit on my hands and twiddle my thumbs if I want to. There's nothing wrong with that. Let that perfect setup happen. Uh, I can look for another trade in another stock, which, you know, obviously I'm gonna, I did at this time because we trade multiple stocks uh, here on our live show. Or I can also look for something different in the same stock, which would be if it's going to be a continuation flush off that area, well, if it gets back underneath that support, I can set up a different trade. Instead of the pop and drop, I can look at a new level like the bottom break and set up a trade off of that level. So allow it to break the pre-market low. Okay, show me the breakdown. Well, I didn't want to take the breakdown because I wanted some confirmation of that trade. Very different setup. Instead of shorting into it, I'm waiting for confirmation that we're getting a different setup. There's your breakdown. The retest, trying to go back into VWAP and that pre-market low, short it off of that for one nice push. It got 10% down SSR. That's why we took it out there. I held some for the dream and got out break even. I tried a VWAP short after that and gave it up when it, break, it broke out VWAP. So this is a case where I had a very specific setup in mind, in a direction, and it almost went perfectly. Like It looked like it was going to give me everything I wanted, and then suddenly I missed the opportunity for the big curl because it didn't quite push high enough. All you can do is move on to the next trade. And the other part of mental agility Sometimes, and I'll be the first to admit this, I mean, look at, what, look at exactly where I got out. The very first thing, you can celebrate all you want your winning trades, but whenever I do this, the first question I ask myself, was there a reasonable reason, is there a reasonable reason, is there a good reason why I should have been looking for a reversal here at that price? I mean, the answer in complete hindsight is yes, went 10% down SSR into higher lows, and what also happened is you've got IBIT, Bitcoin giving you some confluence by giving a consolidation and a breakout. So you actually had that breakout happening. And that's just a quick analysis. Was there a reason that I could have been even more flexible and gone from the short into the long? I would answer yes. So it's not just about what you did do on the stock. Anybody can rest on their lowest. Did I make money on Mara today? Answer yes. Okay, I had a good day. That's not how, you know, you don't get better by looking at it that way. So uh, the first thing was found my way into a different short.
The second part is, I have, to, I have to ask myself, was there another short back into this level that I could have just been in a bit earlier? I think the answer could have been yes to that. And then we could have had the breakout long. So it could have been three times as good of a day if we take those trades. Or it could have been nothing. That's the other thing. We could have absolutely missed uh, the boat on that trade. So when talking about mental flexibility, sometimes you don't get exactly what you want, but you've got to be able to find something else, flip that script, and work into another trade. And I'll give you an example of not being, of not being mentally agile, and this was on NVIDIA. All morning long on the morning show, uh, you would have heard me say, I'll go to the 15 minute chart so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. I just kept yelling out 850, 850, 850 NVIDIA, and I was looking for a flat bottom break. Now, all of my best trades in the last week and a half have been NVIDIA breakouts. So NVIDIA shows a big level, and I take a break of that level, like all of them. So obviously, in a situation like this, I'm thinking, well, just take the next breakout, which in this case is a breakdown, and leave it at that. If we get a break of the high of the day, great. We actually haven't got one yet. But it came down to 850, and every time it just tagged it, bounced, tagged it, bounced, tagged it, bounced. This is a case of not being mentally agile. You can have a really good idea in terms of the key price level because when you trade long enough and you look do technical analysis and you see these levels when you zoom out, you're going to be able to find them. There's no question about that. That's what you do when you, when you find these patterns. But sometimes you got to be willing to change your bias into the other direction for the trade that's in front of you. And it's not so much should I have been long the first time off of 850, but when it starts presenting things like, hey, there's your, there's your higher low the first time at 853, and then suddenly that's a support level. Okay, well, if this is a big support level and it's giving you a higher low, that's worth a scalp trade. I'm not willing to, like here, I like, being, I like to go one direction on big break trades. Like, I don't want to be messing around going long in front of a monster level when I want that break. I try to keep it simple. But it gives you a higher low. I should have had that trade. But the better example of mental agility, this doesn't seem like much. When I took an 870 break on NVIDIA, it goes upside, it curls into here. Instead of going long at 850, I'm now staring a breakout set up at 870 even. And at the end of the day, you can anchor yourself to, I could have been long at 850. How in the heck am I going to take an 870 breakout? That's just stupid, Neil. Or you just take the trade out in front of you. So I was still into that 870 trade because it's set up. Forget about the fact that you missed there, that you missed there, that you missed there, that you missed there. And just take what's in front of you. And even better, I was able to get $1.50 in the first part of this trade. Now, I've taken probably seven or eight breakouts on NVIDIA to the upside in the last week and a half that's set up similar to this. This one was noticeably different. And if you rewind the tape, I would have yelled it out and said, this is not as strong as the other breaks. I said that pretty loud. It's not moving the way it should. And I immediately got out break even. Now, I took a third out for profit, but the other two thirds I took a hit on for a slightly down and more flat trade. That was the point of the stock turnaround. So mental agility isn't just about saying, suck it up, buttercup, you don't get the fills you want, find the next trade. But it can also be, well, this trade's worked seven times out of seven. I'm going to ignore what I see on the tape because it's just going to work because I want it to. In that case, it's still the best setup I had. But when it didn't, con didn't show me confirmation on the tape and I could see it, I accepted it and I got away from it. So sometimes what has been your best idea or your best trades can be dangerous for you. If something has made you the most, most money or giving you the best profitability, you're very likely to be confident in that trade. But what you don't want to happen is have that confidence in the trade get in the way of what you know about the market mechanics when you're reading the tape, the levels that you have set, if I, have to, if I love a trade so much, do I have to fight it past my rules? Do I have to ignore what I'm seeing in the tape? Do I have to ignore what the market... If I have to do all of those things, then maybe it's not as good as I think it is. And that's a case of being willing to take a trade that was away from the original plan, but also being willing to get rid of it because I saw something which was screaming at me that it was not as strong as possible. So mental agility can take many forms in trading. I think the first and most important one is the market's not always going to go exactly to your plan. You can like a direction for a stock. If you miss your A-plus setup, have the agility to find something else that sets up within your toolbox and possibly in that same direction. If you happen, if you, if you so happen to miss out on a monster trade, 
You've got to be able to get rid of that FOMO and look for that next opportunity. If you have a key level that works out for you, that looks fantastic, don't get married to the notion you can only go one direction off that level. If the market's telling you something else and you've identified a good level, maybe you can use it as support instead of a break. Maybe you can use it as resistance um, or whatever it might be. In this particular case, NVIDIA showed me opportunities even though I wanted that short. So be mentally agile. It's great to have a plan, but the market doesn't care what your plan is. And if you're not mentally agile, it's going to leave you behind. So that's your lesson of the day. That's the real deal. Try to be that versatile player. Be a little bit like LeBron or Michael uh, on the court. Thank you very much, Neil. Well, uh, <laughs> eloquent and informative as always. Shout out to the Neil. Thank you very much for that. All right. Uh, before we get into the lesson, there was a trade had. Right as we were getting uh, back, Adara, t take us through that uh, AMD trade. Oh, it's me. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah sorry for that aggressive elbow. To the, <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much to Neil. And honestly, I think what Neil had to say is really, I think something I am trying to take more with regards to scalpulation, right? The idea, I, I say this sometimes, but having a plan and being willing and able to adapt that plan as the market kind of moves you around here. So shout out to Kyle Burdett. I had taken a couple shorts off of this, and then Kyle was kind of pointing out there's been a range on AMD all day. All AM day. So I um, basically, I was trying to get out of this around 175. Uh, looks like the bottom of this range is coming a little bit higher, so we might have to scalp all this out now. But basically, what I was doing is, you can't really see in the five minute, I'll switch to the one minute to make it more clear. But what I was doing is I was kind of getting in at 179 and scalping as we got into 178.80s. So just taking a couple 20 cent moments, then adding when we get back there. I would have liked to get the rest out of this out at 178.50, hence the aggressive elbow. Uh, smushing against the desk, but we didn't get that print. That's okay. On to the next one. We are out of AMD for right now, but if this range keeps working in some form, I'm not going to say no. I am getting hesitant, though, about that decisively higher low. That accidentally rhymed. But you know what also is really important is the lesson of the day. What trades are you looking at, though? I'm looking at NKG, and it just, uh, it's doing the dance here at the volume-weighted average price. So I got in tiny amounts of shares to see if we can hold up at VWAP and possibly print a new five-minute candle to make a new high. Uh, Got to tell you, though, um, I, I'm trading it, but it's awfully, awfully spready for a $2 name. Right now, it's two pennies. I've seen it as wide as five. So be careful with this one if you're going to trade it. And I've given my stop, which is right below the half dollar, right below 250, I've given it about a nine penny buffer between the, the trigger price, the stop, and the limit price, excuse me. Uh, the reason for that is because of the spread. Uh, it can be risky to, uh, to use a limit order on these, um, on these small cap gappers, especially the ones with an excessively wide spread for the price. So keeping an eye on this one, see if I can print to the high side here. Where am I long? Let's put... Uh, something here at 75. We'll see if we make it up there. Uh, we'll, we'll take the print. There it goes, baby. All right, right away. As soon as I put it, it printed to the high side, but we're gonna, we want more. Uh, so let's see if we can make uh, another move up into, the, say, like 980 something. I'm gonna start the lesson in a second. I just have to manage this trade. Uh, if it goes, I'm just gonna flatten it out. If it takes forever, I'll put a profit taker and we'll look to uh, wet our beak maybe while we're uh, dropping. The lesson, the whole point, again, why I got into this, it did the wick shimmy dance at VWAP. The dips below the volume weighted average price were bought up immediately with aggression. The wick shimmy dance, in my opinion, is indicative of buyers overwhelming sellers. I'm talking about when we make a dip into a trade price action wise or into a level, a dip into a level price action wise, especially if it's a key level like the half dollar on a $2 name and then it gets immediately bought up. You have three wick shimmy dance candles right over here at the volume weight average price, which is hanging out at 58s. So we just printed the high there, I believe was 79s. Maybe we'll get something uh, out at 85 or thereabouts. Uh, let's see something here for a sec. Yeah, okay. We can just carry that. All right, so let's start that lesson. Let me load it up over here. Here we go. We're talking about pullbacks today, guys, uh, all week, actually. We're yeah, uh, we're talking about pullback trading all week. Uh, today, we're going to talk about support and resistance levels with respect to pullbacks and how we can use them in a pullback trade. So the basic... The basic pullback trade is great. The one that we talked about yesterday, if you didn't, if you weren't here, just go back and rewatch that show. What if you could add an extra layer to the stuff that we talked about yesterday, and that's what support and resistance is within the pullback context. So let's talk a little bit about that. 
So building on the basics, some of the stuff that we talked about yesterday, we already know pullbacks are what we call temporary dips for long trades or temporary rises for short trades, uh, which are against the trend by definition. Uh, support and resistance zones are price levels where prices have bounced off previously. So imagine like invisible lines on a chart, support stops the price from falling too low while the resistance um, stops the price from rising uh, too high. Let me just check over here. Sorry, I just have to manage this trade. Let's see what we got. I got. Can I just send it to you? Because I just yeah, want to put my, sure. uh, my, my uh, what's it called, profit taker, and then I'll start again. Yeah, let, we, we have to make sure that the beaks are appropriately um, <laughs> wet there. Yeah, Apple, I got back in this short. We're still failing that 175.30. We just tested it again. We came back down. I am pleased as punch. The plan is, I was kind of saying this to Christopher Varga in the chat as well, although I also did say it earlier too out loud, uh, was I got out of that trade because we were really having this weird battle with 175.14, 175.10. I'm just going to keep scalping this down into that level. I think we might be getting pushed out of this trade because we really do keep fighting, butting our heads up against that 175.30. We can't break it though. I'm only risking 10 pennies to make 10 pennies on the smallest amount of my, uh, you know, of my outs. Cause I, my first out is gonna be around 175 tens. Then we're gonna save a piece of the dream for 175. I like ranges, the AMD range broke out above. So gotta find something new to play with. This is that. We're gonna see how this Tim cooks. All right, thank you for that, Adair. Uh, all right, so let's identify the sweet spot here in pullback trading with respect to support and resistance. So the magic happens when a pullback coincides with a support or resistance level because it's the easiest to predict, right? If we get a pullback willy-nilly, I mean, the price could bounce here, it could bounce there, we don't know. But when there's a support, a key area of support or resistance, it's an area that we have notice of beforehand and that we can kind of plan for. The plan isn't gonna to come to fruition every time, but the fact of the matter is, it's something that we can plan for. We don't have to react to it, right? And so that's the whole idea here. So in an, up, in an upward trend, you're looking, number one, for an uptrend. So we wanna ID the trend of the, of the instrument that we're looking at. Then we're looking to identify key areas of support for the long or resistance for the short. In this case, we're talking about an uptrend, so we're looking for support levels that the price can come back to and then bounce off of. So number one, identify a trend. We're looking for higher highs and higher lows. Number two, find a key area of support uh, for example, where we troughed out before and we definitely found support there. It's a whole dollar level. It could be that we found multiple areas uh, of uh, support at in the past. So number one, you're looking for an up one to the right trend. Number two, you're looking for key areas of support. The downtrend, same thing, just in the opposite direction. You're looking for a chart that's mostly down and to the right and you're looking for key areas of resistance above the current price to see where it could bounce back up into, okay? So that's the look there. And then the pullback arrives, right? So now once the, the price action comes down in the case of a long or back up in the case of a short, that's where we punch in and that's where the trade begins, right? So now watch for the price retracement in the current trend. Does it reach? the identified support and resistance levels. If it does, bingo, that's the support and resistance pullback. And here is a case in point. Thank you for adding this data again. We have a trend that's up and to the right, uh, you know, identified by consecutively higher highs and higher lows where key areas of resistance are acting as support. So look over here. There's a reason that's a support area. Oops. There's a reason this is a support area. It's owing to this key area of resistance. This is where we reject it off in the past, and typically what happens with resistance is it ends up acting as support once you clear it. So that's what we're looking for there. Identifying a clear trend and then looking for key areas of support and resistance. The same holds true for the downtrend, down into the right, and when we come into key areas of resistance, that's where we would institute the short, okay? So the confirmation advantage, and that's what Getting a pullback to support or resistance provides us, it provides us with an advantage because we know about that level beforehand. What, again, whether it comes in back into that level or not is an entirely different story, but we know of the level. So support and resistance adds a layer of confidence because they've acted as historical turning points in the past. The pullback reaching these levels 
suggests that the trend might resume after a short pause, whether long or short. So what you're looking for in the case of an uptrend, you're looking for support and resistance in the case of a downtrend around moving averages. And that could be your line of saying. So it doesn't have to be a key area uh, like 175 or the whole dollar area, the $10 area, the $100 area. It could be an EMA or an MA that's being respected by the instrument, especially if it's respected in the past multiple times. So look for confirmation uh, there. So trading above or below these levels can further confirm the strength of a trend. If one of these levels moves from support to resistance or vice versa, it can warn of a potential reversal. And this is what we're talking about here. Adara added this bad boy in. Look how you're holding the 15 EMA quite well. And then you're not, right? And then that's when you know that's the end of the trend and it's not a pullback. It's a reversal. In case you're wondering what the difference between a pullback and a reversal is, go back to the lesson from yesterday. It's a quick wash, watch, excuse me, and uh, you can have a look at what the difference is there. Entering and exit the trade. Entering and exit, entering and exiting the trade is what I'm trying to say. So super straightforward here. If you're going long, you're entering a long position at the support level that you've identified. If you're going short, you're entering a short position, which is a sell at the resistance level that you've identified, and then the exit, key here, you're exiting when the price breaks above resistance, in the case of a long, a key area of resistance that you ID'd, or breaks below support, in the case of a short. Now, what we would always say, and I don't know if I, I won't put words in Adair's mouth, but hold a piece for the dream. So if you have 10 shares, let that one roll. If you have 100 shares, let 10 roll, right? Going through that area in case it keeps going, right? So you can participate and not just watch from the sidelines. Div use divergence for extra sauce. And what we're talking about here is, yeah, great, you've got that key area of support, you've got that key area of resistance, but what are the technical indicators telling you? Specifically, I'm talking about the relative strength index, the moving average, convergence, divergence. What are they telling you? Because those are good indicators for areas of overbought or oversold territory. But that's not the only reason we use them. We look for actual price action, RSI or technical indicator divergence, where the, R, where the price is making higher highs, and then we start seeing lower highs on the RSI, or the opposite, we start seeing higher highs on the RSI and lower highs on the, price in, on the, uh, the actual price action. So what we're looking for here is to combine support and resistance with divergence from technical indicators for a stronger confirmation. A bullish version, a bullish divergence happens on an uptrend pullback where you see the indicator making higher highs like the RSI, but the price actually not making higher high. That could be a leading indicator telling you that the price may start pumping. Conversely, the opposite is true when there is bearish divergence. We make higher highs on the price, but we make lower highs on the technical indicator like the RSI or MACD. Again, that is bearish divergence and that gives another layer of confirmation for the pullback trade. So keep that in mind. Case in point, these two charts are excellent. Thank you for adding the Madeira. We keep getting higher highs on the one on the left, but we don't get necessarily higher highs on the RSI. Look at all these highs here that we're putting in on the price action, yet the RSI stays at the same level, that 70 point level, right? Same thing over here. We're making lower highs in the US Japanese daily chart but we're also making that same level on the RSI. It's not making lower highs. So that is the divergence that we're talking about there. But as always, guys, remember, support and resistance are not foolproof concepts. Price can absolutely break through them. And this is what we call a fake out. Make sure you're always using a stop loss if you're not watching and actually stopping out uh, manually. And here's a little bonus tip. Imagine the support and resistance levels are like magnets that price wants to revert back to. Oftentimes we talk about this magnetic effect with respect to moving averages, absolutely holds true for support and resistance as well, Adira.
Yeah, no, thank you so much for that lesson. Also, shout out to Fabian, who was saying in the ear, um, my ear there, you know, like Bitcoin often provides nice in the wild examples of support and resistance. And I mean, I think, yeah, this is the daily chart. I think certainly the 25 area was super interesting. We had this level around when I started. We had nice support there. Then we break above decisively. Recently, we've had this really strange relationship with that 64 to 68 area. We'll get up and down from there in a day. Like this 68 has been holding uh, something something fierce. I also want to look at the five minute because I had uh, oh five month I accidentally just put here. So let's fix that on the trading view. I want five minutes. Uh, but yeah, because this five minute I initially had up before I put up the daily. And uh, let me just you know fix my chart a little bit here. But I think there is something to be said about this uh, kind of support and resistance little trend line to the downside here. Then we Ooh. flip. A little bit so yeah I mean interesting look there thank you very much for Fabian for bringing this one up mm. to me uh, because I think yeah good in the wild example and I know one that's very much a hot topic because everyone we're always thinking about Bitcoin up in here but yeah thank you very much for going over that lesson um, Sharif oh no problem um, Joe Schmo is yelling about uber uh, got you Joe it is moving and I have no idea why it is moving in the, the way that it is moving um, if I don't see anything on my blotter either what's going on Brenkles is nuts. What's going on back there? Getting excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Uber, yes, great move there, Joe Schmo, off that 74.19. Now it's breaking through 76. A, a plethora of green candles here coming in for Uber. But I got to tell you, it's not moving alone, my man. Uh, have you looked at NVIDIA? NVIDIA is on the way to going green, baby. It's about to go green, like within, you know, maybe a dollar or something like that, which is nothing for NVIDIA. Uh, Meta. Also coming into pivots, Microsoft almost at day's highs, Apple at day's highs, Amazon at day's highs. So a lot of stuff is pumping to the high side here. It's not just UBER, but thank you for pointing that out. We'll see. Uh, are we above yesterday's price action? No. So we still have that 77 level from the pre yesterday after that big boy Hwadunk. Look at that move down on Uber yesterday from 77. Where did it get down to? 73 and two thirds. Okay, so Oof. that is a decent move. Anyway, we're green on Uber right now as it broke above 75, 70 or thereabouts. That's the, pre, that's the closing print on UBER yesterday. But I'm a little disappointed. I had to get out of this NKGN trade because I had to do the lesson. But here it is, man. We got, we got out uh, a break even on the last little part. There wasn't much left. Let's be honest. There was not too much size to begin with. But there we go. We make the move up. We hold the volume weighted average price. It holds at that level and it makes its way up to 293. So we don't get that 295 touch that we were looking for uh, owing to this wick up here that got us into 294. But yeah, NKGN, still decent. But I got to tell you, the spread is not to my liking on a $2 name. It's three, four pennies at times. That's too much. Um, for a, a, a stock that's done, how many shares has this thing done? Almost 9 million shares. I guess that's not that much for a $2 name by 12.30. So we'll see. NKGN, still very tradable in my opinion, well above the volume weighted average price, well above the pre-market high. So it has all those check names, check marks beside its name. So we'll keep eyes on that. NVIDIA just went green on the day. This thing is absolutely flying to the high side there, guys. Look at this. I don't want to call it a flat top break, but we had multiple attempts at this 871, 872 area. I mean, you've got to give a little bit of range there with NVIDIA. And here we go, 886 HOD on the dot. We're at 885 and a half right now. Looks like it wants to take high day out. This is where pivots are, uh, and this is where the closing print. So we closed out yesterday, 884 and a half, and pivots is at 885 and a half. So they're both separated by a dollar, which on the NVIDIA chart looks like nothing. So we're above the IB high, we're above the 200 period, and now we're going green. And there's the new high of day, 886.58. I mentioned this yesterday, I'm gonna mention it again. If you don't wanna trade NVIDIA, NVDA ticker, there are three others that you can trade. They're all cheaper, and therefore you can manage risk a little bit more easily on them. NVDL for the long, NVDS for the short, and then I don't know what this one is, the X. NVDX, which is more expensive than the previous two. It's about 90 some odd dollars. I'm not sure how much it is now. You want to trade those ones? They move in tandem with NVIDIA. I had a trade on NVDL today that went well. So keeping eyes on NVIDIA as it is finding a little bit of resistance to be expected at these levels, Adair. I mean, you don't just come in to the closing print 
Well, maybe if you're NVIDIA, you do, but. That's true. Right. Yeah. Like, you're acting say. like NVIDIA is a normal stock, Sharif. I know. How dare you? I know. I got to give this thing a bit more credit. It's the monster. It's. Jensen would not approve. Jensen? Okay, I don't know. You didn't. You, did, you didn't watch the. Keynote no, I yet. saw some of it, but I didn't watch. Like I know you he's watched. He's a little thing. awkward guy. He he's kind of like. Okay, so he has these jokes where he finds funny, and you know you can tell the crowd is laughing because he's Jensen like, Wong. <laughs> but they're yeah, exactly. So he's making like all these like little wise cracks, and everyone's like crickets. Hit the crickets, baby. Ram Ram, you got or Chelly Nutmeg, you got the crickets. He got the crickets. He's got to go to the monitor anyway. Uh, he, I don't know. Yeah. I found he's cool. He's cool. I mean, like, a, as a pun fan, I have, you know, you got to try to make your joke. They're not always going to work, but I think you have to try. Tan uh, win in the chat saying NVDX is two times long. So thank you, thank you. Uh, for, for clearing thank that one that. up yep. for us there. Also, I have my eye on a trade. I'm not in one right now. I did get out of Apple. We got above that uh, 175.30. We risked 10 pennies. <laughs> we did lose. We're slightly negative on that day, but more or less flat. Like, uh, we're down less than, like, a Slurpee on this, and it's just because I took more share size with the second uh, crack at the apple there, but we ended up uh, falling there. I think, weirdly, now the range is 175.20 to 175.30. Apple seems to be playing this range, uh, this game called How Tight Can My Range Get? Oh. And it's what I don't really want to play with it because you can't, I don't even know what to risk when you're only going to be getting 10 pennies out of this. You Good know what point. I mean? So, not really going to be worth it for me right now. If, if Apple wants to widen that range, I'll probably have my eyes out, though. But another range trade that you you called an Adara Panera trade, mm. I love this Google range. I'm trying to get involved just above 146.30s, uh, taking with a little bit more size, a little bit more oomph, because this um, this short has been quite beauteous indeed. Oh, yeah. I want to be able to try to get down uh, to that 146. 14 area. The one thing that concerns me, though, is we do have this big wick uh, to the downside showing that, hey, maybe we have sellers overwhelming buyers, uh, and we've had a little bit of a, a, an issue getting below that 146.14. The other part of me says it could be a flat bottom break, or what were you calling FBB earlier? F double B? There it is, baby. Eddie are also killing with a great pun in here. Careful with Apple. Sign to Adam and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> they learned their lesson. Uh, I like what Volky says uh, here because we were asking for the crickets, and then Volky's like, We have crickets waiting for crickets. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> Shout out to Volky. I thought that was funny. Uh, Sharif uh, says, Amir Barak, look at APM. Yes, sir. Looking right now. I'm going to pull this bad boy up. Here it is APM. Aptorum Group, not sure I know what this is. $51 million market cap, okay. Uh, $10, trading at $10. The float, two and a half million shares, okay. Let me just find out what the short float, if any, is. Uh, bring out trade ideas. Make sure to use code TRADERTV20 for 20% off trade ideas. APM, short float negligible. 0.01%, nothing I need to concern myself with. Now let's look at the daily to figure out what this stock is all about. Okay, so we, we lived in uh, $3, $2, $1 land for the majority of this stock's life, and its life began not this past February, but February 2023, when this one started trading. Uh, lately, though, the volume has been coming in fast, and it has been coming furious, and the price action has followed the volume. Look at this day that we had here on March 6th. We started off our life here at a buck 75. We get all the way up to 1750. All right? And then obviously we have areas of corrections and retracement, but look at this. We're continuing. We're not we're not giving up the ghost like some of these small cappers you hear about them once and then they're gone for good. So it looks really good. Um, I got to tell you the truth Amir. Now how do we trade it on the day? Let's see. Well, to me, it's not tradable on the day because it's trading below the volume weighted average price. So it's a small cap gapper by most people's definitions with a $52 million market cap. It's got to get above $10.50 and close above $10.50 on the five minute look for me to get involved here. But, you know, trade this as you will. We, uh, we also don't have a definable pre market high to break owing to yesterday's price action. It's a multi day runner. We know. We've been seeing this thing move since the 6th. So it's not like a one-off event where it started moving in the pre. So this one, it, it looks great for a swing if you can deal with the volatility. But to me, not tradable. That is until it gets above 
VWAP and closes above VWAP. So let me know if it does that, and then maybe we'll, uh, we'll pull up a trade on it. Some of the other small cap gappers that I've been watching on the day, um, LICY, still tradable, okay? If you're setting up a dip trade around the half dollar or a little bit above the half dollar, maybe 154, 155, that's where the volume weighted average price is. Still holding VWAP quite well. The only thing I would concern myself with here are the successive lower highs and the flat bottom that we're putting in at VWAP. So if this one absolutely breaks the, fat, the, the bottom there, we could easily see uh, towards the bottom end of that range of buck 30, even a buck 25. So keep your eye on this one. And maybe if you're gonna get a dip trade off the volume weighted average price, a tight stop maybe below the half dollar, that's giving you four pennies or five pennies worth of risk. So if, if you get filled at VWAP, that's at a buck 54 right now. And I put my stop on the other side of 150, the south side of 150. So this one's still in play, L-I-C-Y, it's a multi-day runner. The one that we had a trade on, positive, NKGN, absolutely tradable. And it's knocking on the door of three bucks and has been for some time. And look at these successively higher lows. So even though you had that retracement into the volume weighted average price, number one, you held up at 250, so that's good. Number two, now you're putting in successively higher lows, maybe not higher highs because of all these wicks into 293, 290 that are selling off, but this one looks awfully good. Bull flag, if I've ever seen one right there on NKGN, very strong. What are you looking at, Adara? Yeah, NKGN is a really nice one. That APM as well, Aptorum, I know that one started oh. popping up um, earlier when I was on, on the big desk, just kind of as I was leaving. So it was a little bit of a later entry to the small cap marathon. It wanted to run with its pals. But yeah, APM definitely, as, as you pointed out there, kind of chilling out a little bit. Google, um, if you'd like to continue to chill out because you've been in a downtrend all day, I would not be disappointed. No, all jokes aside, I like this downtrend. I did, I was gonna get in that 146.34. Then I changed a little bit to 146.29. So should have been more patient there. You know, should have been getting what I get, not getting upset and not moving things around. So that's definitely on me. If we get above this area of 146.46 with any kind of oomph, because that was an area we had a little <laughs> bit of relative support and resistance earlier, I'm going to be staying involved here but as um neil was just saying in the chat google is so weak so you know i think i think as someone in a google short that makes me definitely tickled pink also um darwin i really just enjoyed um the way that this this whole chat was phrased where is this um i took some btc earlier i'm okay if someone pamps it i love how casual that is and you know what pamp it pamp, pamp it pamp i can't say it that the, yeah pamp yeah. But, um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> hopefully that, that BTC goes uh, well there. Tried my hand at, at the pamp it. But yeah, th this Google is really the only thing I have on right now. Then Apple decided it would actually not like to stick to that 175.30 area. The last time it did this and broke above, I got out. We made it up to a cool 175.35, I'm pretty sure, before we, we went back down. So Apple might be... Say it with me, the dead one, again on the day. We are up on the day, but we've been trading in like a 30-penny range for the past We're hour. We're in higher lows, Adara. But we've been in a 30-penny yeah, range. Yeah, fair, fair, yeah. Apple Apple has a history of being the dead one. So That's true. Sometimes <laughs> it's, a, it's been fight. the down one a lot lately. Let's be real about it. That's and, true. And, um, yeah, we've been, we've been wetting our beak on some uh, entries there on the personal account. Yeah, Katina, nice man, have you added on Apple lately? He, the Katina man bought 169s. Yeah, I remember because that was a swing. You're out. You're in. Okay, he's waiting for 180. Um, he's he's swinging it. But you're still holding some Apple for the long term, though, obviously, right? A lot for the long term. I agree with that. Shout out to the Katina man, baby. All right, Jay Lee wants me to look at SMR. Sorry about that, Jay. I just had to, uh, you know, ask the Katina man what was up with Apple there. So the Jay Lee. You think SMR is a good bounce play long today? Please bring it up. It was high yesterday. Absolutely, sir. Let's look at SMR. So we're, let's give some deets. Uh, it's called New Scale Power. It's a $1.5 billion market cap. Let me just put it in the ticker here, SMR. By the way, I'm long uh, LICY, okay? Nice. Yeah, I'm looking for a VWAP hold here. It's going to have to hold the volume weight average price and my, my out is like I said, on the other side of 50, doesn't hold the half dollar, I'm gone, okay? I've got a beak wetter set up at 65, so if we get a move up to 65, I'll be looking to take some profit, that's on L-I-C-Y, but we're looking now at SMR. 
So let's go ahead and look at the wider view here. Let's bring up the four hour on SMR, Jay. Wow. Wow, Jay. What a move up and then what a move down. Jeez Louise. Okay, so clearly something uh, was afoot here late February, early this month because from the, from the February consolidation area to the high, we were up 316%, okay, since that time. Then the correction came in. And since the high to where we're trading at right now, we're down 42%. Okay, so now that is uh, the look there. Now let's zoom, out a, I mean, zoom in a little bit here. Let's go to the half and figure out where these uh, support levels could be. Well, Jay, $6 is staring at me in the face. Why? Couple of troughs here. The, the first one on the 14th, the second one on the 15th. Look at this. Yeah, sure, the one on the 14th dips way below, but look where the closing prints are, Jay. Right at six bucks, 597, no, not even, six dollars exactly. That's on the 5th, 14th and the 15th. So I like this for a six dollar hold. What's going on, guys? NVIDIA's, NVIDIA's absolutely ripping the Katina Man said, where are we at here? 892 on NVDA, this thing is flying. Okay, so I have to interrupt, Jay, because we got to cover NVDA. We're past, um, what's it called? Uh, the uh, the break-even point today on the NQ. That was 18.230. Now we're at 18.250. NVIDIA looks like it's single-handedly lifting up the NQ right now as we go into positive territory on both NVIDIA and the NQ. What a move up here midday. Oof. Did not anticipate this at all. People don't give a you-know-what about the uh, Blackwell and the fact that it takes 30 days to, or 90 days to do the same thing that um, the H processor did. They're buying this up hand over fist. So here we go. Looks like we're going to get 900 again here on NVDA, but we'll cover that in a second. Anyway, Jay, I like $6 as a defend on SMR. If it comes into 6 I'd be interested long here, dear. Yeah, I mean, NVIDIA got a pop. There, you are right, Apple did finally have its breakout into 173 for, or 175.40s. But yeah, this one, I mean, and yeah, Ramin was joking, fight, fight, fight. Yeah, no, we, I, I do agree with Shreve. There have been higher highs and higher lows. That's why I exited that, that short range. But yeah, it's just been taking its sweet time. You know what I mean? Like, a name like NVIDIA, you get dollars. Um, a name like Apple, you got 30 cents in an hour, right? So it's just a bit more of a slow mover. But yeah, this name, definitely a beast on the longer term, which is why so many people are involved in it. Uncle Warren was certainly tell you that Apple is a beast and a company he is down for. So, um, yeah, no, not, did not mean to insult Apple or Tim Cook and co. I just think, yeah, today definitely a bit uh, of a slower moving kind of dude. Also, uh, Google popped up a little bit, then popped back down. I'm getting out at 146.46. We didn't reach that area yet. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens here. Patience is a virtue that I uh, often don't possess in spades, so I'm trying to work on that for sure. But yeah, that's what I have going on right now. Also, I'm gonna pull up Tesla in a second. I'm just getting IWM on my uh, side chart because that's a good look, but I don't have a point of entry in that. Tesla though, Solo Cristo was asking, have you wet your beak in the Cybertruck today? And I did earlier. I did have that long off that 171 area. Uh, when we had that bounce off the 90 MA, that was nice. I initially was planning to get into that 172 Wait, sorry, 170, 160s. We didn't get that. I got out 170, 140 for all of it. So nice look here. Uh, definitely seeing a little bit of, of issues trying to pop above that 170, 230. But I wouldn't short that because I'm seeing a higher low. I think there could be some kind of break above, like what Apple was attempting to do there. D420, Meds Music. I love that name. Uh, IWM is on the move. So let's look there. At IWM, yes, it certainly is. It's, it's, we got up to that 202.60. Uh, now we're seeing a little bit of a bearish engulfing candle. We're trying to attempt that here to the downside. This is not something I really have any kind of point of entry on until later. But wow, what a nice look up. We were around here when I did that. Um, when I did the small cap recap, we were down on the day here. We were down, down. about negative 0.5 um, percent to the downside here for IWM. Then the Russell decides it wants to get a hustle on, and it keeps doing these. Nice, you know, we talked about support and resistance in the, in the lesson, which we will see round three of in about 10 minutes. But look at this nice bounce off that 9 EMA. It's a really nice look here. Uh, again, with these ETFs, I try to look less at what the chart's doing and more at what the um, book's doing. But I think, you know, either way, this spells support. I think it's a nice move up. I don't really have an, an opportunity to kind of, or I don't really have a way for myself to bamboozle into this trade as of right now. If I see something, I will... Um, 
yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get involved. Uh, Google, though, we are now uh, about four pennies out of the money. Uh, let's see how Google goes. You know, Neil did say Google was so dead. I really do not disagree. Let's see how Google happens. Um, as long as we don't make a higher high on this, I'm going to be cool continuing to search for a move down Dumb. in my G-O-O-L. G-O-O-G-L, not Google. It's Google. Also, Yoel Reina saying Disney going up. So let's take a look at the House of Mouse. I know Nick W was mentioning this one earlier. This one was also on the watch list with regards to that story about George Lucas, Disney's largest individual shareholder. Disney, much like IWM, really fantastic. Look, very hard to find your way into, though, because it's not giving you a lot of dips. I'll have this quick little, like, brush against the 90 MA, and then it's like, oh, sorry, I have to keep going to the upside. Uh, does not care about your feelings if you're trying to get a dip buy in here. No, sir, no, ma'am, no person. We'll keep flying to the upside here on that DIS. Meta, actually, a pretty similar look there. Um, because look at this, as you can tell, I drew lines here because I did want to get involved in this, but the spread at the time was like 18 pennies. The spread on Meta continues um, to, be, to be pretty spready. I don't have a, a better word. The shout out to Randy, who I know once said that, oh, that one looks pretty spready about some stock. So yeah, I, I agree about that with Meta right now. Randy. Um, yeah, shout out to Randy. Uh, no Christmas Eve retracement though on Meta. No. Meta gets to that 945 uh, bottom, hangs out at 482 and then says, nah, I'd like to go higher, thank you. Cool, $12 in the money, still down on the day though, is META. Also, Google trying to pop back up. Thank you, no thank you. I might have to hop out of this one soon. We're, we're inching towards my out at or my stop at 146.46. So we're gonna have to see, I do not wanna stay in this um, during the lesson of the day, or sorry, that's Neil's thing. Uh, during our daily lesson on how to yeah, trade. I don't know what you mean. Um, but also, yeah. Thank, shout out again to Neil for killing it with the, the lessons of the day. Every day, I know people in the chat uh, seem to really appreciate them. And honestly, like, you know, I there's something I learned from for sure. And I do agree with what um, what Neil said today for sure about, like, not being too committed to an idea. If the idea changes, get out. Um, and don't try to force something that isn't really working, right? Don't go chasing waterfalls. And I certainly think that that's why I need to get out of this. Google, we broke above my area. I'm out. So we are down in this name by not my much, still green on the day. And honestly, pretty happy with how the trading's been going today. Just trying to take smaller positions and names that I'm less comfortable with. I did actually shorten video earlier today, but I did so with a smaller share size, so I felt comfortable doing it. Right now, though, shorting NVIDIA feels like a very, uh, a very interesting endeavor indeed, because we're knocking on the door of 895s to, to use the Sharifism there. Yeah, this could be, this could be interesting. And then to be clear too, that doesn't mean there aren't some opportunities to short NVIDIA. I just think it would be incredibly counter trend at this time. There's no areas of resistance that I can see. NVIDIA is like, oh, you want 895? Cool, let's give 897 <laughs> while you're still talking. So now that looks like an area. Uh, yeah, if you're NVIDIA in the long, it looks like it could be a bit of a win NVIDIA. Jacob saying, hello everybody. Hoping you're having a great day so far. How kind of you, yeah, I, hi. I hope you're having a great day as well, Jacob. What a great community we have here. NVIDIA is um, like just breaking my brain. NVIDIA is pamping. Uh, who, is that Ram Ram? No, it is Ram Ram. Okay, I thought it was a Katina man because he was printing up a factory there on NVIDIA because he keeps saying it keeps going higher. And here's NVDL. Uh, I just want to show you where I got in on NVD on the day. 37.66. Look what he's doing right now. 41 and a quarter, and it's printing higher. Here comes 41 and a third. NVIDIA on the way up, baby. 897 HOD. Looks like it's going to break in a second because we're at the high of day as we speak. The Fuge being pulled up aggressively by NVIDIA. 18.268. It looks like we may make may make our way into 18.3 or thereabouts some point in the day. We're going to keep eyes on NVIDIA. We'll keep eyes on the future. Um, sorry, Alexander Wheeler, you haven't experienced good cinema until you watch Indiana Jones. I'm assuming he's talking to what I said to Eddie R because Eddie R was like, um, bad joke. How many T's does Indiana Jones have a lot because... Tata, ra, tata. I don't know how to say that. Do you know? Have you watched Indiana Jones? Been a while. Been a while. Do you know what this saying is by Eddie R with the T's? Right, right, yeah. Right yeah, there. I see it. Yeah, I don't I, know what that is. I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with Indiana Jones. I know. I, yeah. I, I think I know what you're referring to, but I could not say it in any proper way. It's okay. been like years since I've seen that movie. Sure, Pondera knows. He, he says he thinks you know what it is, but I, I, 
Oh, it was the theme song. Yeah, yeah okay, I, figured, I gotcha, I, I gotcha, I figured. Look, man, I mean, George Lucas is not a joke. I mean, the fact that he comes in as a single largest uh, individual shareholder and says that other people as well are backing Bob Iger, makes a statement about when Bob Chapek was there and how he didn't like the direction of the company. He was pleased as punch when Bobby I came back. And, you know... Bobby I. Like Bobby I, big Bobby I, right? So, you know, he's uh, he's made a statement. Now, when when is that shareholder meeting? Because it's soon, right? It is soon. It is, it I is. think that will be, like, literally something out of succession when that happens. Yeah, straight up, uh, right? Which would be really exciting. Which would be super interesting here. We're going to have to wait and see what, what happens. Uh, Peltz wants the CFO, the current CFO of Disney, and himself to be put onto the board. Whether or not he gets that, an entirely different story. Obviously, Bob Iger. April 3rd. Thank you. April 3rd. So we're talking the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah. So, yeah. make uh, may, well, We'll definitely be keeping eyes on that, no question. All right. Let's talk a little bit about NVIDIA because it's uh, a couple of bucks off the HOD right now. Back down in 894, 897 high a day. And you're seeing that uh, 41 trying to hold right now on NVDL. In case you're wondering what I'm doing on NVDL, look at NVDA. We have three derivative products that you can trade, NVDL, NVDS, and NVDX. Make sure to prize yourself of them if you want, you know, a bit more of a risk management friendly trade here on NVIDIA, obviously, you know, uh, it moves, but it doesn't move in the same dollar amounts. Now, LICY stopped out for a five penny loser here, got long, a six penny loser, excuse me, got long at 55s, stopped out 49s. This one broke the volume weighted average <coughs> price, so that was my first indication. Then it broke the half dollar area, so I want nothing to do with this one until it reclaims VWAP. But maybe I got out of the wrong one here. I'm talking about wrong small cap gapper, because NKGN keeps on making higher lows and higher highs. So we got into this one, had to get a little bit. Um, we, well, we got a nice trade in initially, but we had to get out flat or one penny move, I guess, for the remaining amount because we're about to do the lesson. But here we got a touch at three. In fact, it did break above three, got to 309. We're below three right now. But I, I think the trade is still valid. Number one, it's above the volume weight average price. Number two, it's still putting it in higher lows. And we haven't made a lower low. So the crest that I'm using, or sorry, the troughs that I'm using is at 270. So the $2.70 area is what I'm earmarking as the previous low. So if we break below 280 and then make our way down to 270, and then that the trade is no longer valid for me. So long as we're making those higher lows, I feel that the trade is valid. So keep your eyes on NKGN. My only um, criticism of this name is the spread relative to the price. It's a little spready, given uh, that it's a $2 and change stock. So it's going to, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to accept that about it and make sure that you are using uh, risk management strategies that coincide with the spread. All right, let's see what else people are talking about. The Dude. That's an amazing name. His name is The Dude. That's awesome. Yeah. He wants me to look at RTX. Sure. Let's bring in that. Is that Raytheon? Yeah, Raytheon. It is Raytheon. Yep. Thank you, yeah. So, well, you know, sadly, we are in a time of war everywhere, it seems. And, uh, you know, these uh, weapons companies are likely to do well. And I got to tell you something else. We don't talk about politics, but let me tell you about this. Canada is increasing its percentage of GDP for military. So, you know, NATO, there is a standard that every country that subscribes to NATO has to spend at relative to GDP. I think it's 2 or 3%. I forget exactly which one it is. Um, Canada's increasing their defense spending. We've, we've seen that. We've seen, you know, um, other countries increase defending, uh, defense spending as well, even non-NATO countries. We've heard about Japan looking to increase defense spending. Germany certainly is. So who knows how these uh, kind of weapons companies do, but let's have a look at uh, how this one's been trading on the daily, Raymond. So here we go. So this one troughed out. Late September, it looks like we got to that 65, or there, sorry, not 65, 68. Since that time, how much are we up? Since that time, it's about, what is that? 58% or so since that time, okay? Great levels off which to work. I'd say $90, an excellent area of support. I don't know if it makes its way down there. It looks like we're breaking through the... Uh, the consolidation level high here. 
So we consolidated at this 93 as the top for a while since essentially late January. We've broken above that now on a closing basis. So maybe you want to use 93 as your support because it was clearly resistance earlier. And then look at this. So in case you didn't have enough evidence there that 93 was a level, well, look back over here. Look at this trough over here from last year. That essentially is around 93. Sorry, that, that, yeah, that's from last year, around May. So that 93 or thereabouts, a rinse and repeat type level, it's nice when those flip. So ideally, I would have said 90 as that support area, but that's the bottom end of the range. If that doesn't hold, it's 93. All right, I'm talking about a swing trade here. I'm not talking about a day trade because I don't think this one is day trade friendly. What is the spread on this thing right now? I'll have to look somewhere. Anyway, uh, on the five-minute look, yeah, I mean, we're not getting much of a range on the, on the, on the daily look. I mean, where did we open up? We opened up at 93.50. We got up to 95.40. Now we're at the volume weighted average price at 94.50. So right there, smack dab. In the middle, it's not a stock I typically trade day on a daily, uh, on an intraday trade. But you know, sometimes when there's earnings or a headline, then we can. But this one for me is more uh, is more swing trade uh, appropriate than an intraday. I hope that helps. Uh, NKGN is absolutely tanking here. Okay, so this one is giving up the ghost at the volume weighted average price. It looks like it rejected three, and now we are breaking down below the volume weighted average price. So this one is giving up the ghost here, up 31.5%, but it's no longer tradable in my book. It has to get above and stay above VWAP. Right now it's on the way down. It's breaking down below the 20 period as well. So NKGN giving way here. Let's go back into large cap world, see what's pumping. So we talked about AMZN as that kind of a Dara Panera top end type range over here and look, and now it's making us look bad because it was putting in higher lows before and that higher lows ended up taking out that top that we had here at 175 and two thirds. Now it is 175.80. It looks like we're gonna go up to 176. We're getting into resistance level one here on pivots at 175.90. So Amazon now up three quarters of percent on the day and putting in um, you know, discernibly higher lows here. AMZN looking awfully good. I would say there is a bit of similarity between Apple and Amazon right now in the sense that you're not getting that huge move up, but you're getting those incrementally higher lows with kind of a flat top. Look at Apple. Looks the same way here, right? You're looking at the 20 period, and every time it comes into that 20 period, it bounces off, and it makes a higher low subsequent. So Apple and Amazon looking a little bit similar here in their charts, so we'll have to keep eyes on that, see if there's any divergence there. But yeah, that's it. Oh, NVIDIA dipped into 890. And we, uh, well, we held up for the most part at 890. We got into triple eights, their high triple eights, and then got bought up immediately $5 above where we dipped into. It <laughs> looks, and NVIDIA doesn't give you a, a long retracement here. It goes into 897, down in, into 888, and right back up we go into 895. NVDA looking uh Come back in a day's highs of air, up 1%. Yeah, it looks like we got the bond auction because I got, oh, uh, my I bad. believe, my IWM. I don't have the results up here yet, though. Waiting for those results. I know shout out to Exclusive mentioning that one. Yeah, this IWM honestly should not have probably added in um, right before um, the bond auction. Now, you know, I, I got out because we popped up and now we're falling back below. So, eh. Uh, but that's okay. Would not have been able to manage this trade and do the lesson du jour. Um, so that's all right. Um, yeah, I honestly, my big thing too is I'm trying to worry less about my P&L while, while taking trades. I got involved in that short because look at this uh, rejection we had of that 20250 area after coming down. And again, I don't like to look purely at chart action. The book, we just had this weakness here coming off of that big move down. A couple five-minute candles of red. I decided to get involved. For whatever reason, we woke up at that 9 EMA and then woke up again after the bond auction. So I said bye. Um, you know, if, we, if there's more coming there, maybe I'll keep an eye on that. 20-year auction, uh, we got 4.542% versus 4.595% previous, so lower than the previous number there. Um, IWM saying buy Adara. It was buy WM, I guess, for me. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, would not, not something I would have been able to keep an eye on anyhow while doing our daily lessons. So ah, I'm ready to... Um, 
move Can on to that. I just say that. one quick thing? Please do. BTC above 65,000 and the mining names and micro strategies up six and a third since the bell. Coin up 4% since the bell. Mara, Riot up 4% and two and a quarter. All since the bell is so negative on the day since 4 a.m. but they're up since the bell, sorry. Nice, yeah. Um, also, yeah, definitely let's uh, look at the lesson so I can stop um, feeling bamboozled by IWM. Good times up in here. Uh, as you say, you either learn, uh, you l win or learn. And that's, you know, what we're, we're going to do here. And of course, we're learning on how to trade. So let's uh, talk about support and resistance pullback. We had the basic pullback trade yesterday, which is, of course, really important to know. But what if you could just add a little bit of spice or sauce, as we'll talk about later, an extra layer of confidence to this trade? Support and resistance pullbacks do just that. So let's build first on the basics, because we already know that pullbacks are going to be temporary dips or rises against the trend, but support and resistance zones are going to further act as price levels where the price has bounced previously. So imagine invisible lines on the chart, or in my case, just draw an excessive amount of lines on your chart. Support price will stop prices from falling too low, and resistance will stop them from rising too high. You want to identify that, that also pamp it, says Sharif. Um, you want to <laughs> identify the sweet spot, right? Because the magic is going to happen when a pullback coincides with the support and resistance level. That's not always going to happen, but when it does, it's going to be, of course, really cool to see. Um, upward trend, you're going to be wanting to look for an uptrend in higher highs and higher lows, and then you're going to want to identify a support level where the pr price bounced before. That might be a nice... Uh, pullback opportunity for you. On the flip side of that, in a downtrend, if you're looking to enter a pullback in a downtrend, you're going to be wanting to look for lower highs and lower lows. So it's the flip of what you're looking for in the uptrend. You want to find a previous resistance level where the price got rejected before and jump right in. And uh, we will have some diagrams of that after this last chat here, because then what you want now that you've identified your trends, you want to wait for the pullback to arrive. Watch for a price retracement in the current trend. Does it reach the identified support and resistance level? If it does, bingo, you have a support and resistance pullback. So here's one example, the sickest Newmont Mining from Investopedia. Look at this beautiful bounce here off this level as we continue to the upside. That would be support. You might want to get into this pullback. Again, not advice, but just you know, takes on the chart and looking at different areas. Downtrend line as well, worth noting. Here's an example, um, a very old example from Amazon from 2002, it looks like. Look at this. Uh, we have this move down, and they've identified a couple different times mm. that we've touched and then rejected again. So should nice mention that there. the price scale here is logarithmic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I would Just not have known yeah, that. Yeah, it's all so. good. Thank you, Shreve, mentioning the logarithmic um, price scale there on the downtrend line for Amazon. The confirmation advantage is also something you really want, right? Because you might not want always, you know, want or feel you need confirmation, but it always does help because support and resistance can serve as historical turning points. So they do, or they they have served, sorry, as historical turning points. So they can act as a further level of confidence before you enter your trade. And the pullback reaching these levels suggests that the trend might resume after a short pause. You also want to be looking for support in an uptrend or resistance in a downtrend that you can sometimes find around moving averages. It's not always going to happen, but when it does, chef's kiss adds a little bit of magic. Trading above or below these levels can, in some cases, further confirm the strength of a trend if one of those levels, and if one of those levels moves from support to resistance or vice versa, it can warn of a potential reversal. So here's an example here uh, from Investopedia again, a shout out to them. Look at the 15 MA on this chart, we ride it as support. Then we kind of see a little bit of shop and churn, and then we start finding it as resistance. This is a flip that shows, uh, you know, different areas, different ways that levels can act as support and resistance. And if you see this kind of fall below, you might realize, oh, oh, the long is wrong now, and you might want to be cognizant of that. There you go. Entering and exiting also really important. So you might want to go long. Uh, so. If you want to go long, you might want to enter the position or, or buy at the support level during an uptrend pullback, pullback. On the flip side of that, if you're going short, you might want to sell or short at the resistance level during a downtrend pullback. So uh, you're going to want to exit your position potentially when the price breaks above resistance in an uptrend or below support in a downtrend. Bang. And divergence will be some extra sauce. You don't want to get lost in the sauce, as Obi says, but it does give you a little <laughs> bit of extra oomph in your trades. You might want to combine these techniques with divergence from technical indicators like RSIs for stronger confirmation. Bullish divergence on an uptrend pullback, so that's when the indicator rises or the price falls, can suggest a potential buying opportunity, and the opposite, so bearish divergence, is going to be in a downtrend pullback, and that could suggest 
potential selling opportunity. Here's some diagrams. In this case, on this chart, the USDJPY, we have these lower lows, but the RSI is printing higher lows, so you know we might still have some movement up. Bearish divergence, also USDJPY um, on this chart. We have these lower highs on the RSI, but we have higher highs in the chart. That shows we might still be bearish, and indeed in that case, the bears continue to growl to the downside. You also want to remember, though, a couple tips. Oh, sorry, we have a pro tip as well. Oh, no, that was the one we just did. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting lost in the sauce here, apparently. <laughs> uh, you want to remember support and resistance aren't foolproof, and prices can break through them sometimes. Those can be fake out, break out. So you do always want to make sure you're using lo stop losses in every case, but especially these cases, to manage risk. And a bonus tip is just imagine the support resistance levels as magnets. Another shout out to Obi here. A pullback towards them can be like, being drawn in potentially for a continuation of the trend and with support and resistance pullback, you can trade with a skosh more confidence, Go. knowing that the price has res respected these levels in the past. Happy pullback hunting. I like it, happy pullback hunting. As Adara was dropping hot lines, WORX decided to get off the schneid, as my friend Neil likes to say, at three bucks and make its way back into volume weighted average price, which is hanging out around, let's say 340 or so, 40 pennies off the bottom. Still, you know, just if you're gonna follow the rules that I put out there, uh, it's not tradable uh, as a long at this point. That is until it gets above the volume weighted average price and holds. On the five minute chart, you gotta have some sort of standard off which to work. And right now, to me, it's not tradable, but for my shorts out there, the people who love to short these small cap gappers or low floaters, which I don't recommend, this is an excellent area off which to short. And then you could have your area uh, stop around the break of the half dollar because the VWAP is at 338, 340 or thereabouts. You can put your line in the sand at the half dollar. That's about 10 or 12 pennies worth of risk. And if you uh, gauge it off that three bottom, well then you definitely have uh, a two to one or a three to one there because you're risking about 10 to 12 pennies to make about uh, 40 or so to the downside. That is if it comes back into three. Personally, I have to secure shorts for this. I don't wanna do that. So I tried to see if they were free, they're not. So I'm gonna wait if it breaks above the volume weighted average price and closes their works, we'll be back in my good books for a trade on small cap gappers. But right now it's doing the dance at the volume weighted average price, not sure how this goes. Big Kyle Burdett shorted the ES and says, got half off with profit taker, still holding a half. Shout out to you, Kyle. Hope you print. Told you that already. I even yelled out to the market to dump it. So uh, go, go for it and uh, let me know how it works out. Keep me updated. We'll keep everybody apprised. Now, SOUN, a lot of people were talking about SOUN today and I didn't see it on my gap scanner. So I was like, okay, let's uh, have a look here. We're definitely, you know, I don't want to say we're ensconced with yesterday's price action. We were not because we made a newer low. We got to 760 as a low today and yesterday 785. <laughs> Thanks, Katina, man. Uh, was 785 was the low. Right now, though, we ended up closing yesterday at 823. So eight and a quarter or thereabouts. And look what happened here. We got that big boy move into 870 and then we came back down, held yesterday's close. Guys, chart the close. It doesn't take that long to do, right? See where it closed out at and throw a horizontal line there. It, it, trust me, it'll, uh, it'll give you another level off which to work, okay? That's uh, all I gotta say about that. But SOUN holding that eight and a quarter, uh, bouncing up into eight, three, seven, eight dollars and 37 cents. Wait, let me tell you what the volume is on this bad boy on the day. If I can get it over here, what is going on? Sound Hound has done a cool, a measly 71 and a half Ooh. million shares, which is not bad for an $8 name, guys. Let's be real, right? Sometimes wow. we don't see $2 names or $1 names doing that kind of volume. Anyway, it looks tradable to me in my books at the moment, but it's going to have to stay green. It's a well above VWAP. VWAP really is not the level off which I would work. It's $8.03, $8.04. To me, I would use yesterday's closing print as my line in the sand as to whether or not to go long or short. Right now, it's showing you that it's more inclined to go long at that eight and a quarter. Now breaking through eight and a third, looking to go eight and a half. Technically, HOD is a little bit above eight and two thirds, a little bit below eight and three quarters, so we'll keep an eye on SOUN. 
getting wondering what the hell is going on with that. So you went NVIDIA threw some money behind this name. And so it's been running ever since news broke of that. Let's see what else is uh, popping off here. WORX not getting above the volume weight average price. And now LICY and NKGN, the only two small cap gappers that we were really uh, eyeing today for a trade. And we, trade, we traded both. They're both untradeable in my book right now because they're both trading below VWAP. So um, no small cap gappers in my book at the moment to trade. But AA Dang PL, new high of day. This one looks like it's on its way to 176. 175, 85, Apple up and to the right. Very slow mover. I, I'm very hesitant to call this one the dead one today. But uh, you know, it's moving. It's moving in the right direction. I was happy to add in the 60s, I added, and I didn't add reluctantly, I didn't. Like in other cases where I've had to DCA to get out of trouble, this is not a DCA on Apple. I, I think that they're creating an entirely new type of compute, and I, you know, I think that the AI story is not even, we're not even scratching the AI story, scratching the surface of the AI story for Apple. Yeah, that's just my opinion, not financial advice, obviously, but. We'll see what AAPL does. Anyway, 175, 85 HOD, it's trading in the 60s right now, so a bit of a retracement off that level. What else we got? What's NVDA doing? It's still hanging out at triple eights over here. Is that a motel, triple eight? I think so, yeah. It is, yeah. So. I believe so. <laughs> I was like, I've heard that uh, name before. Uh, anyway, uh, it's green. It's green on the day. I'm not gonna trade NVDA. I'll look at NVDA. I think that you know, NVIDIA is providing us with good volatility here midday. So that is going to make me pull up NVDL and uh, we'll look to set up another trade on that bad boy. NVDL, let's get, oops, it's on the NASDAQ. Let's look at some levels here that we can get a dip trade off for on NVDL. So that 40 level looking awfully good. Now, what I tr I've tried to do is at different times I've tried to put levels on NVDL and correspond them to levels on NVDA. I'm just giving you a random example. I don't know if this holds true. Let's just say $40 on NVDL. Uh, it could be $880 on NVDA. I'm not saying that that's accurate. I'm just saying keep your look for uh, some correspondence there between levels on the derivative and, and levels on the actual name itself. See if you can make any, uh, any correlations there. Anyway, we'll look for something here. Uh, once NVIDIA starts curling back up. But right now, Dara, it's coming back down, only up a quarter percent on the day as it looks to stay green above that 884 and two thirds. I see triangles. Yeah, I mean, these triangles are, I, I honestly, I'm hoping that this is not a revenge trade on my part. I didn't think it was. I got the IWM, as you can tell, um, IW massacred me just a little bit with that um, print that we got on the bond auction. We swooped up. I swooped out of my short. Uh, it is what it is, it's okay. Uh, this I'm getting involved in not because of anything the chart's doing, but because this, the book has weirdly been rangy, 202.40 to 202.50. I got involved 202.40. If we dip below 202.30, I'm gonna have to say sayonara. Uh, I've been watching what we do at 202.30, we've been bouncing. Could have added to the position there, but again, uh, see earlier chop and churn situation that I got chopped out of there, so, or chopped up in or what have you, so I, I don't really wanna add here. I'm gonna get out at 202.50. IWM is certainly, you know, trying to be a little bit difficult. Uh, that's okay. Uh, uh, you know, we're gonna see what happens here. I do not wanna add to this position. Honestly, even getting involved in this, I felt kind of weird about, cause I was like, oh, you were doing so well on the day. But also one thing that I'm trying to do less is trade based on my PL. I'm gonna trade based on trades I like. I did like that short. The short was working until the bond auction said, no, you don't. So that's okay. Um, we're gonna have to see what happens here on this IW. I'm really happy to hear you say that. I don't know if you ever heard me venting to BPI. Yeah, you, you, you I was venting to about too. trading my P&L too. I think it's an op, it's, you know, it's not a good thing. You hear the Katina man talking about it as well sometimes. It's yeah. one of these things traders do, you know? Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, the Katina man is short Coinbase, guys. Uh, so new trade for the Katina man. He's taking Coinbase short. And I see topping tail candles, so this looks really good. Just want to point that out. Okay, give me a second. He wants to know, the Katina man is asking Adara, what price he thinks he shorted Coinbase at? Go, Dara, you I got this. I love playing this game. This is so <laughs> much fun. I know Sean, um... oh, okay. Is it 232? Higher, oh, 233? 
232.96. So I, I did not do um, the best at this game today. But yeah, Sean seeing the topping tail candle and shorting in the middle of it. So nice look there. Shout out to Sean. Also, I love that he's now calling himself the Katina Man in the chat. <laughs> Oh, no, that was you. Sorry, that, that was, was me. I was letting that. everyone know the Katina Man is short Coinbase because you were talking. Right? I don't want to interrupt. No, that's cool. Yeah, I thought for a second I thought that Sean was saying that the Katina <laughs> no, Man was short Coinbase. I don't think he's talking about himself. I didn't the think so person. either, but that's Can what I was imagine? confused. Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw the, sh the Sean, the Sharif in the chat. Yeah, I, in the time we did that, in the time we played that game, which is very fun, and shout out to Sean, more than a dollar in the money on that trade, IWM decided to cooperate as ghosts, so we're going to have to be patient. I could not babysit this trade because um, that's not fun for anybody, including myself. Tesla, though, continuing to be interesting. Uh, the range on this is incredibly tight, like kind of too tight for me to have an entry point on. But that 170-160, if we come into that and bounce, that was a line I drew earlier. I know some of the lines I was drawing ended up having a little bit of, you know, uh, being a little bit simpatico with uh, the pivot. So that could be interesting if we bounce off that 170-176. I think you have about 70 pennies there to 172.30. So if we get that, I might get involved. Also, AMD trying to maybe do a little something, something. This was another name I liked earlier. And also interesting is we have a massive rejection of that 182 area. What are you looking at? I'm looking at, at NVDL. I'm trying to weasel my way into an NVDL trade. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm trying to weasel my way <laughs> is because, well, NVIDIA is right back at support. We, we were just talking about this green line. That's pivots. And the fact that pivots and the closing print are like... Uh, how much are they off each other? So 885, 26, 884, 65. Okay, so almost, just give or take a little bit more than 50 pennies off of the level. So a lot of support at this level. And so this is making me like this possible trade here. So let's go ahead and punch long on NVDL. I'm looking for a hold of this level on NVIDIA. If we can make our way back into maybe 890, 892, or thereabouts, my line in the sand is gonna be the break of this level right here. So it's not gonna be too much room. I'm gonna give this about 20 pennies worth of room on NVDL. If it makes a lower low through this trough over here at 40 and a quarter, that's what we're look to get out. But I'm looking for this level to hold on NVIDIA. I like the level uh, that it retraced into. It's a key level that I had marked up on my chart. It is pivots and the closing print yesterday. If it holds this level, I like the trade, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to hold the level. So we'll wait and see what we get there. Um, some other Meg7 names all curling down. I'm talking about Meta curling off the top. I'm talking about Amazon curling off the top. Softy as well doing the same thing. They're all curling off these highs. I say saving except for AAPL here, baby because AAPL is continuing to put higher highs and higher lows. Now coming into 175.85, we're in the 71s. But as you can see, with some of these other names, we're all starting to curl a little bit back down. So we're going to have to wait and see, you know, is this going to be a thing with all these MAG7 names or what the deal is going to be? Let's wet our beak here on NVDL as it makes its way into 4060. If we get printed, there it is. There is a print. Pleased as dang punch about this. Let's see if we can get a bigger move to the high side here, baby. I'm looking possibly for, sorry, 895. I'm thinking 895 might be an interesting area here for NVDA, um, just owing to where the closing prints were. So the wicks got into 897. That's fine. We know that. But the closing prints are where I put a bit more stock, and that's 895 uh, or thereabouts. It's, no, it's, that's not fair to say. It's 894. That's the closing prints are all 894. So we'll see. We'll see if we get a move up on, uh, on NVIDIA at these levels. So pack our patience. Not really a big trade anyway. So let's look at what else is moving here, baby. Did you notice Fisker is down another 8% today? It's at, 14, it's at 13 and a half pennies. I feel bad for this company, man. Jeez, and you know how much money they were spending on digital sales? I gotta tell you, I was seeing it every day on my Instagram. I'm not seeing it anymore. This. Yeah, you I'm were. I'm not seeing it anymore. So clearly, that money is not being spent on that anymore. But another eight percent of dare, man. I don't know if this company can hang on. Oh. I feel bad. Yeah, I mean, Fisker, you could call it Risker, honestly, or holding on by a whisker. Um, <laughs> I do feel really badly saying that. Um, hence this face, because like honestly, it is really sad. Yeah. Um, it is. Because, yeah, this, this company just, you know, did not, was not able to... No, nope. but my, as my old man work. says, you don't have a right to be in business. 
the market will dictate whether you are in business or not. You don't have that right. So, well, it'll be uh, one of many companies that we've seen either make its way down to the OTC markets or not here altogether. Maybe we'll be talking to Jeff Mendel about it soon. That's Who true, knows, yeah. Right? So yeah, FSR, you know, it's obviously breaching the NASDAQ or the, does the NYSE have a dollar uh, law like the NASDAQ where they have to be in compliance above a dollar? No, okay, we'll I'll have to look into that. The Katina man is not sure either. So we'll have to look, because uh, Fisker is obviously on the NYSE. We know the NASDAQ has that requirement of a dollar. If you stay below a dollar for a while, they send you a letter and a warning, get your stock above a dollar. So that's when we see the reverse splits coming in. Uh, I'm not sure if NYSE has that same rule anyway. We'll find out. 889, come, here comes 890 on NVDA. And now uh, we're moving up a little bit here, not too much. 890 on NVDA, but still not moving with any viciousness, as Adair likes to say. But we did come into that 890 area, Adair. Yeah, I mean, you want to see the viciousness. You know, you, you, <laughs> you kind of do. Um, but yeah, all, um, all jokes aside, Elon in the chat was asking me about AMD. Um, you got back in AM dancing at 178.30 earlier. Congrats to you, awesome trade. Did you get back in, possibly curling up to 182? So honestly, this is not really my type of trade for AMD right now, I'm gonna be really honest. That was what got me um, IW massacred with IWM. It's just that wasn't, A, it was an ETF, so it was already kind of dicey. B, it was not my type of trade. C, I don't mean to laugh, but you said IW massacred. It made me laugh. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not offended by the laugh. I know at one point someone Yeah, I should be like, laughing when you're talking about losing trade, but the way you, you said it made yeah. me laugh. No, I appreciate it. I know at one point, too, I think like a while ago, someone in the chat was like, why is Sharif always like laughing at Adair? And She's I'm, like, funny. I'm not offended. Yeah, I mean, I, it's all in good fun. <laughs> it's all in good fun. Um, so, yeah, I just thought that was pretty funny. But, um, but yeah, this the one thing I do like about, and to be clear, I still think AMD is a long. I'm just saying about whether or not it's my type of trade. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, this, to me, needs to be a little rangier. However, look at this chop and turn we had at that 182. If we see this 9 EMA hold up as an area of support, yes, this is my favorite level uh, to trade off sometimes, then I think I could be interested. I'm going to wait for a candle here, because look at these little baby candles. I want to wait for like a strong candle that says, hey, I'm here at 181 and I'm here to stay, and then I'll probably take it to 182. But congrats to you, Elon. This is a great long in AMD. Um, I think it's honestly a really nice look. I think, though, I, I am going to be cognizant of that 182 level, because that was that support earlier that became a Scotia resistance. That being said, I mean, I do think that, that AMD has had quite the recovery, and it's been a really fun name to trade. My best name of the day by far, um, and I'm, I'm yeah, pretty proud because I know it can be a little bit uh, of a harder one to trade, but I know Sean was killing it with AMD earlier. AM destroying that one, so um, shout out to you on that. Um, yeah, th thank you, Elon. Yeah, good strategy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, it looks like AMD is trying to like prove himself to me right now. Like, hey, look at me above 181. We're going to wait for a candle and see what happens. Um, Tesla, like I said, I wanted to see what Tesla did at 171.60. Tesla, baby bounce at 171.60. I want to see, can we hold 171.80? Kind of a random level, kind of arbitrary, but I want to see what we do there. If we can hold, I'm going to take this to 173.30. I like my ranges, and the market's actually given me quite a few today. Um, and then the other, there was another one I was looking at. Oh, yeah, I know Joanna Brewster was mentioning Microsoft earlier. Microsoft has been um, directionally challenged and confused all day. We have this um, 420.50 area that we had a little bit of support earlier, uh, but we're still making kind of lower lows right now. I mean, we're still up on the day to be clear with Microsoft, but maybe a bit of a frowny face on the horizon. I don't really have enough clear enough read on this either way. To call this one bamboozling would maybe uh, not be an exaggeration. I think it'd be a fair point. But yeah, I think this, um, this Microsoft look kind of interesting. Uh, not, not as strong though as what I'm seeing in AMD, which actually, is giving me some confluence. We're, we're moving here in a, on, on NVIDIA. Here comes 892. We're at 891.76. Uh, we're moving up nicely here on NVDL. We're about uh, 43 pennies in the money or so, give or take. We're on our way, it looks like for the moment, to 41 as NVDA does knock on the door of 892. And there goes 892. Can we get a move into 895? That's what I've been kind of waiting for here. 895, 894. That's where the closing prints uh, seized. That's the top end of the closing prints, the wicks, though. They go into 897. So we'll see if we can get a 41 print on NVDL. I'm trading a derivative. I'm not talking about options. I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, it's an ETF essentially, right? Uh, NVDL. Uh, it's got to be an ETF. It's two time long NVIDIA ETF, and that's what we're trading so we can manage risk a little bit better because, well, you know, you can just absolutely get 
beat up trading NVDA, especially with a person of my shutdown and my buying power, it is a lot different than when the big kahunas are trading NVDA. A lot different. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing on NVDL. Uh, but I want to look at BYND because Igor asked me quite nicely, and I think it's, he's asked me a couple of times today to look at BYND. So I shall. So beyond me, obviously, you know, that this company has its own issues. Look at the chart on the daily and you can figure that out. It looks like, you know, this was one of these pandemic darlings that hasn't really come back um, to, to how it used to be. That's just really what it is. Look, Igor, I got to tell you, there's not much for me to see here, uh, especially on the day. Like we pop up 814, uh, $8.14. 14 and now the low is, uh, sorry, the low is 740. We couldn't break through that. There, were, there was a buyer, obviously, there you can tell. Uh, and now we're at volume weighted average price. We're at 761. So there's not much of a trade for me. If, I, if, if anything, I'd really be looking to short off VWAP at these levels, but I wouldn't trade BYND given how much volume it's done. I wouldn't trade it because it lacks a catalyst on the day. And this one typically does need a catalyst. Um, it's not, you know, day in, day out type stock. Let's look at the chart. That's the daily chart. And this is kind of what I meant about being a pandemic darling. Look at these highs here during COVID goes up to almost 230 bucks. And now, you know, we, we had a good day. I remember reporting on earnings at the end of February on this day. And look at that big move up. So from the low of that day to the high, this thing was up like 118% uh, on one day. And then it's given back the entire move. I mean, it's just a disaster if you're holding this for the long-term account. I, wow. We're, we broke above the 200 by some distance, and then we retraced that whole movement down. That's a disaster, man. So, I, look, I don't like BYND on the daily. I don't like it intraday. So I, I hope that helps. I'm sorry I couldn't add any anything to your look there. Here comes... 841, I uh, sorry, 41 on NVDL, and I flatten out there as we break up into 893 on, well, almost. Yeah, now we're above 893. Here comes 894. Wow, NVIDIA really going. 894 coming in. We have an 897 high, so took it out on uh, NVDL. That's the end of the trade there. Yoel, out of curiosity, what identifies something as a catalyst? Well, if it shows up on my blog, no, it's a good question. I know, I, I agree. That's like, yeah. yeah. Like typically what I mean by catalyst, you well, is if I come in to the morning, I, I see some, you know, like let's just say Lee Auto yesterday, right down 13, 14% because uh, XPeng is going to drop a cheap uh, SUV. So that's, or sorry, a cheap EV. So that's not really, you know, a catalyst in the traditional sense. It had nothing to do with Lee Auto, yet Lee Auto was down. I can kind of put the two and two together. So that's an indirect catalyst. Sometimes you have a direct catalyst, like there's earnings or a, a good play. Uh, something, they, a new contract for BYND. Maybe they make a deal with McDonald's or whoever, right, to sell this, that, and the other. So that's kind of what I mean by, uh, by catalyst there, right? Shows up on my blotter. It explains why something's moving. I typically call it a catalyst. The Hayes Records took 30% on X, S Bucks put. S Bucks puts. Shout out to you, the Hayes Records. Please, a dang punch for you. Sorry about the... Uh, the PA system, but we've been having fire drills yesterday and today, making sure that the uh, fire system here is all good. Shout out to you, you Igor, thank you. Uh, and no problem, you all. Shout out to you, my man. Uh, we love having you on, uh, goes without saying. All the viewers are undefeated, except for the ones that troll us. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I'm panicking. Oh. I can never live that moment down, I think. Oh, what, when you said I'm, I'm panicking, panicking and when my monitor went out. Oh, I uh, remember that. <laughs> if it's Ram Ram reminding me, Brendo reminding me, the Katina yeah. man trolled me about it yesterday. Now Neil getting in on the action. Uh, that's the way it is. I love working here. And I'm just going to show up every day and take the heat. What also, you I like that you do like the face you did when you did it too, like that I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Because yeah. that was, um, if you saw it, that was how Sharif... <laughs> Uh, that was Sharif's demeanor throughout that um, ordeal. Though it certainly was stressful, it was panic-worthy. Also panic-worthy is AMD casually not getting uh -oh. back to 182. We were in 182 for two seconds. I was ready to punch out, and then AMD was like, nah, just jokes. I did get part of it out here at 181. Um, 181.70. So if we can get back to 181.80, that would be great. But AMD weirdly deciding that 
its little uh, trapes towards 182 was uh, only just a dream. Shout out to Nelly. But yeah, I think um, we're going to have to see. We're weirdly struggling with 180, 170. They knew we would a little bit, which is why I got some of the position out here. But this may be a little bit more of a battle than I was uh, emotionally prepared for. So I might be panicking in this trade. No, I'm, I'm all good. Also, yeah, shout out to Elon for um, pointing out this nice recovery there at that 181 to me. Shout out to Elon in the chat. Um, this is a level that I'm really happy I, I didn't miss. So thank you very much for that. Although before I move on to the next look, I'm just probably going to flatten this one here. There we go. Um, if we come back to 181 and bounce, I'll get back in. Also, thank you so much to Michelle Hebert for the member super chat. Sorry, I missed this one earlier, but much appreciated. Member for 21 months. Shout out to you. Adara and Sharif, I'll tell you how to deal with pullbacks. One, buy IBIT this morning under $36. I did. Two, profit. Smiley face. BTC, small 50 percent tracement retracement over yeah congrats shout out to you thank you so much for the chat let's look at ibit uh, i know sean enjoys trading this name yeah 36 um ibit is a great level here look at all that support we had earlier at that level a uh, little bit of resistance then we pop back up congrats to you what a look ibit uh really nice look here still down on the day uh what with bitcoin's little uh dip down but this has been a very nice look you know it's not elon musk in the chat there um x is just you know someone in elon in the chat but yeah this is a, a really nice look here on um ibit trying to curl back to the upside so thank you very much to michelle hebert yeah nice look here um Shout out to uh, the Hayes Records on the Starbucks puts. Um, so nice look. Yeah, we're up. Woo, this is a nice one. Yeah, Starbucks, I know uh, Bros, so uh, another coffee company, Dutch Bros, getting its price target increased today, and then Starbucks getting its lowered. So one analyst was really into these coffee names today. Okay. Don't know what was in their cup of joe. No. Um, what analyst was this? It was the same one both times. Um, yeah, it was J.P. Morgan because it was 7.30 when I saw this. So Jamie Dimon uh, deciding to uh, not get his Starbucks Gold Star rewards there with ah. Starbucks lowering that price target uh, to $100. And then they raised the one for bros. But, yeah, this is a really nice look here. Steady move to the downside. A little uh, doji even decision at 10.30. So congrats to you, the Hayes records. Ricky Paddington asking about DWAC, which is not a name that we've looked at no. today. It is below a million volume. It is, um, how is it doing in volume? It's, it's slightly above Lily in terms of volume. That's always the one I use as my volume related anchor because a lot of times Lily is low volume. So it's like, are you above or below Lily's volume? But Dewalk is above Lily's volume. This is a little bit hard to read, I'm not gonna lie, especially given the low volume. We're below VWAP for a while, we pop back up, kind of have a dance below VWAP, slightly higher highs. Uh, but lower lows. I don't have a clear read on this one. I'm going to be really honest with you, Ricky Paddington. We are seeming to have some resistance, though, at 3460. This is the one level I think is clear as day. We bounce off 3460, then we see it as a little bit of resistance. So that's my take on that one. Um, yes, that's my look at, at DWAC right there. Nothing too DWAC on this name. It's actually pretty subdued. Uh, AMD, I did uh, get out of, like I said earlier, that... 180, 170, so we took 50 pennies on this. If we keep bouncing off that 90 MA, I, I might hop in, shout it again to Elon in the chat for reminding me of this name. But I see Elon. Sharif has a name pulled up that is one of Alfred's uh, looks, I believe. Yeah, you know what? Look, there's two 10 cents. There's 10 cent music, and then there's like oh, 10 cent, yeah. the one that owns WeChat and stuff like that in China. Uh, so that's not it. But what I'm looking at here is TME, guys, on the NYSE, ticker TME, Chinese ADR up eight and a third percent on earnings. Uh, we, we didn't cover this because we don't typically cover 10 cent music, uh, but it is a respectable market cap. It's a $20 billion name. Uh, you know, nothing to sneeze at there. Let's, uh, let's have a look at TME. It stood out to me because it was really the only really green ADR. You have XBEV up 3.46, even BABA is green, 0.12 but you're really nothing here like this. And obviously, again, this is the pandemic pump right here, right when we got into the highs, and that's when uh, Papa Powell dropped the word transitory, and, uh, you know, all hell broke loose after that. We know th the story about that. But look at since the pandemic bottom, which I would say came in for this stock at around three bucks. Yeah, three bucks. Look how... We're now we're back up into 11 and a third as the high. And let me just show you quickly here. 
a little bit of a better look. This is not a bad looking chart, guys. This takes us to June 2022. Since June 2022, and the highs that we printed today were up 100, sorry, 215% on TME. So not a company that I follow awfully close. Anyway, it's, it's a great look today. They reported earnings. Apparently, they did better than expected. Here is the headline there vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Benzinga. Tencent Music reported quarterly adjusted earnings of whatever. Uh, was that better or worse than expected? So the group reported EPS for the quarter 83. Okay, I'm not going to bore you guys with this, but I mean, it looks as if the uh, the market liked what they saw from earnings. And this has been making a very discernible trend. It is higher highs and higher lows from that October bottom that we put in. It was not October, but it was down October. What's going oh, on? Oh, sorry. Um, Ramin is there, just, is there me, me, Ramin made a pun in the chat. laughing up a storm back there, bro. Ramin made a pun in the chat because she asked Ricky Paddington if he was bearish. Get it, the Paddington bear? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, my God. Paddington bear. the bear. It was this I don't movie. even know what that is, uh, dude. Was I right, Ramin? <laughs> yeah. was, but yeah, so that was why um, Ramin said, are you bearish? And I um, I thought that was uh, pretty I don't sorry for know. laughing. Oh, it's an fine. It's, no, no, it's fine. Bitch. I mean, you know, I love a good joke. I just can't participate because <laughs> I don't know what the Paddington bear is. But that's all right. Yeah, I'll my pull, bad. I'll pull Rammer. up Paddington. I'll pull, I'll pull up. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Oh. But yeah, with respect to TME, it's a good look, guys. I mean, not like a day trading stock. It's done 13 and a half million shares today. Let's have a look at the intraday look here on TME. Like, well, it's, it's a very good look today. I mean... We uh, close out yesterday at 10 to 3rd. Now we break up into 11 and a 3rd. It's been holding the 20 period quite well uh, initially. Then it started hugging the 10 period. So right at the 10 period now, that 11, 20 area TME. Again, just wanted to point that out. Not one that we typically trade. But that is the Paddington Bear. Yeah, okay? So, so like, I have no idea. What yeah, it was, it was two movies. It was two movies. I don't know. I've been living under a rock. So that, that's kind of, he's known for his little hat. <laughs> but yeah, that's him. And um, I really enjoyed that pun, Ramin. And um, yeah, I mean, certainly who could be bearish for this uh, little Paddington bear? But yeah, I enjoyed that one. Um, and yeah, the, the, ten, the 10 cent. Yeah, sorry again to, to laugh. That's fine, Adara. Yeah. You don't have to apologize. TME me is, um, uh, is a, a really uh, interesting one for sure. Another Chinese ADR that reported earnings that I think you maybe uh, have a little bit of beef with. I'm joking because of the Lee Auto um, sort of feud and that they're both Chinese ADRs. Um, Xpeng experienced a little bit of X pain uh, right off the, the open. I remember I was sitting at the big desk and I was like, why does this thing keep falling um, at 9.30? We were initially up about 4%, then we were down about 4%. Now we are up again about 4%. So to say that X pain is uh, much like Microsoft directionally confused is I think a fair <laughs> statement, but we are clearly seeing some kind of resistance at this 10.20 area. Look at this. Um, wow, that's a good look. Right? right? It's a really, oh, yeah. if we come back into this range, I know someone who might be interested in trading it there, <laughs> and I would be that person. Xpeng, about 13 mil in volume. Honestly, not something I complain about. Embarrassingly, I've traded Lily with a lot less, so I, I you know, no volume complaints there for me on Xpeng. If we reject this 1020, I actually might take a short with a really small position size. Uh, and let's look at the daily to see actually what kind of X pain we've been seeing lately on this. Thing. Oh, it's going to be oh, ugly, Adair. It's X painful, yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, nasty. <laughs> you're just telling me in advance because I know you're more familiar <laughs> with the Chinese ADRs than I am. Well, I just have to keep Liano. eyes on this yeah. one because of Lee. But I mean, it's. I mean, I don't think you're really going to pull up a really good ADR except for PDD Baba? and look for a chart. Well, well the Baba lately. chart sucks too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a. Xpeng was, I don't want to say flat bottom break, but we did have a couple touches of this 15 area of support and resistance. Then we fall below. I would say we could do it. Now, th this 1020 area actually looks like a nice short. Because look at this earlier uh, resistance that we have. Then it's a little bit of support. Then it's resistant. Also, Ramin does not want to be excluded from the Cool Kids Club. Washington. Well, because Big Kyle Burdett was like, uh, Ted is more of my speed for a bear movie. And I think Ted is hilarious. Both of them are. Shout out uh, to Big Kyle there. And then, you know, Ram Ram not wanting to be excluded. She's like, yeah. I'm, I was going to do a voice there, but, you know, I want to ram ram on my good side. I talked twice, says she. Yeah, because Kyle Burnett said less chat chat and more chart chart ram Oh, ram. well, that's, uh, yeah, that's a statement right there. Fighting uh, words Fonzie there. Fonzie uh, <gasps> telling us Paddington Bear is from Padding, what, what happened? Paddington Station. Oh, yeah. No more ram ram. He's, whoa, he's whoa, taking whoa, a vow of silence. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I don't know about that. 
Uh, sorry, guys, but the PA, we were having uh, fire, uh, the fire alarm testing yesterday and today. So if you hear that, that's uh, just the, uh, the PA system here. All right, guys, let's get back into, let's get back into some trick. Guys, Apple is at day's high. 175.85 AAPL. Uh, still doing well off uh, Ram Ram Char Char. Uh, <laughs> off uh, yesterday's news about the uh, collaboration with Google. And we're about now 13 pennies from that 176 area. It was a bit bamboozling yesterday, though, because I, when I got home, I looked at where we closed, and we were well off the highs. Guys, we knocked on the door of 178 yesterday. We got to 177 and three quarters, and we retraced to almost close near low of day. So I thought it was like the market, you know, giving the finger to Apple, essentially, just telling you, I don't care what kind of AI news you have. We're, we're selling you off because we literally did a move back into the level that we were at prior to the open. I mean, the, I, the, uh, the IB low is above where we closed out yesterday. We ended up closing at 173 and three quarters. So I, I don't know. I, just, I felt there was more downside potential for Apple. And look at the closing print on the daily yesterday. This was an ugly looking candle. Uh, this is the candle I'm talking about from yesterday. Look at that upside down. It looks like a complete reversal candle. Looks like the bears were absolutely in control. You can barely see the body of the candle. But then we come the next day with, uh, with a solid green candle and looks like right now we're to the high side, closing to the high side. We have obviously a lot more time left in the trading day. So Apple just printed new highs, 175.87, but definitely a hard road to hoe for Apple. Now, the, the, move down, the move up in NVIDIA seems to have stalled out at the exact area that I talked about, 895 or thereabouts. Uh, we're having three candles now wicking off uh, 895 with the closing prints all being in that high 893 territory. But we're still putting in higher lows. So we haven't made our way back down into support at pivots or at the closing print. Um, we've been printing higher lows, not necessarily higher highs, but you think with NVIDIA, it's just a matter of time till we break through that 895 and maybe even see 900 on the day. So guys, if you're looking for a trade, keep eyes on NVIDIA. It's, it's still, the trend is still intact off that big down move. And we held yesterday's closing print as support. I think that's awfully bullish in my books. 897 HOD, we're about $1.50 off that. You know, as I talk, NVIDIA will change the price like four or five times. That's true. Right? So anyway, it's above, it's at 896 right now. It's looking to go 897. So NVIDIA still strong on the day. It could present us with more opportunities. And there you go. There's the pump on NVDL breaking through that resistance top at 4115, touching that 41, almost in a quarter thereabouts. There, there comes the quarter and there goes the quarter. So NVIDIA uh, looking to look, take days highs here. We're awfully close to days highs. We just oh printed 896.60 on that candle. So we're 40 pennies off day's eyes on this five minute candle. Good luck on NVIDIA. Wow, yeah, NVIDIA has been um, a wild one also. Yeah, shout out to Ramin and Fabian, killing it in production. Also, um, some people try to, you know, give some ice cream emojis there to Ramin, so good times. I did get involved Vegan in this ice cream? Pardon? Vegan ice cream? Oh, I guess, I guess vegan ice cream then, yeah. Oh, there we go, get the bang button for that. I forgot about this. Do you remember? She walked yeah, in at with six in the morning with like vegan seven. ice cream. And not like she was bringing it for later. Yeah. Part of it was missing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, she's, she's laughing over here. Also, I'm laughing right now in this x Pang short. I'm really happy with this. I'm proud to decide to take it. Look at this little, I mean, it's really small, but look at this little wick of a failed movement to push up above that 1020. Look at this massive resistance at 1020 earlier. I said I like this short. So we're going to be taking little pieces um, of it along the way. I like taking some out at the 1010 area. I like taking some out at the $10 area. I like the idea of further saving a piece of the dream. And as Sharif mentioned earlier, you know, you might want to save that piece of the dream because you don't know where the trade is exactly wow. um, going to go. So right now we're a cool one penny in the money uh, with this XPeng short. And hopefully there's going to be a little bit more oomph there in XPeng. Also, AMD does not want to stop. Oh my gosh. AMD now pushing above 182s. I will say after the IWM debacle that I dealt with, it, it, it did feel a little nice to have this AI, uh, this AMD trade off that 181 area. So again, thank you again to Elon in the chat for mentioning that one to me. Yeah, I think 
AMD, I know someone was mentioning uh, what would we do at 183. I think AMD breaking above 18250 would probably be what I'd be watching for wow. first. Now, why do I say that? Look at this uh, support we had there. And then we couldn't wick back above it. So I do think what we do at 18250 is going to be a little bit more key for me. For AMD that actually New high day on AMD. On, on NVIDIA, excuse me. Oh, uh, wait, yeah, we're coming into 898. Here comes 8, 898, 897, 89. It's a new high day. It's continuing to print. Woo. Uh, Neil bringing in a really good uh, point here. Has anybody looked at Micron on the day? Because something interesting is happening here. This is weird. Yeah, this that's a hell of a consolidation level there. It almost looks like a buyout. What the hell is it? I was going to say it looks like a bio trade. Right? It does look awfully consolidative, and i got to agree with Neil on this. This is super interesting here, what's happening. What is the range on this? So here's the closing print yesterday on Micron, this white line. So 97.78, say, let's say 97.80 was the closing print. Since 12.15, we've been above that level. But we haven't been able to print anything above 94.20. So it's been 93 Let's just say 80 and 94, 16 to the high side. So that's just like, what is that? It's 20 pennies, 36 pennies, right? That you're ranging now for the better part of almost, well, at 2.15, it'll be two hours. So super interesting what the hell is happening with Micron here. What is there a thing on Micron? Let me just have a look, make sure there's nothing in the, oh, does it? Is earnings Micron? tomorrow night. Thank you. That's what I was about to say. Earnings are tomorrow. Thank you, Neil. Uh, thank you, Dara. Yeah, I just saw that in uh, the shares here. Here's the earnings preview. Um, what are they expecting here? Analysts are looking for 24 penny EPS on revenue of five and a third billion, which represents a 45% year over year pump on the uh, on the revenue. Now we know Micron's including their DRAM with NVIDIA, and that's look what it says right here. Micron began volume production of its high bandwidth memory semiconductors, uh, HBM3E, which is the acronym for use in NVIDIA's latest chip artificial intelligence in February, so we know they're doing business with NVIDIA. Stifle calls Micron, uh, or says Micron is going through a sweet spot for memory, so you know these things tend to be cyclical, and this could be a super cycle for it. I mean, I have no idea. Not financial advice. We'll keep eyes definitely on Micron's earnings tomorrow. But, yeah, that's a hell of a range trade today on the day. I don't know. Do you like this kind of range trade? Like, is that too tight? I think that might be too tight. But then, again, I'm about to scalp four pennies out of XPing, so I probably cannot talk at all. Uh, let's look at Micron and see. Um, I pre Thank you for asking. And I, I do I appreciate that. Um, shout out to Shree for always kind of honing my, my range abilities. I know you've always just kind of shouted that out, so I do appreciate it. I feel like, you know... I, I feel the respect. Uh, so bottom here, 9390 into 9405. Honestly, if I'm going to talk about scalping out three pennies of XPeng, I have no issue with this. I have no qualms about range trading Micron. Honestly, I would do it. The only thing, though, is to me, there's not enough consistency in this range. Right. Do you know what I mean? If we were consistently getting 15 pennies, but some yeah. of these candles, you're only really going to be getting like five or ten. Barely, I, yeah, I, You exactly. know what I mean? I think if, if there's a little bit more of a consistent oomph, then I'm a little bit more comfortable Fair. with that. Like XPing, I know what I'm getting, and I know I'm getting uh, scraps. And I'm going to compare <laughs> that as well to this AMD. AMD gave you steadily a dollar for a while here, right? You had that defined range. And then you had it again coming into 181, 181, or 182. You know what I mean? So I think this this type of range, you know, I don't mind how tight it is. I just mind how consistent it is. Fair. Same with the Apple um that the Apple chart's a little bit hard to look at now, um, and I mean that like literally. But that Apple 174 uh, 80 to 175 20 range was also a really solid look today. Also, I apologize to Apple for saying that I thought it was the dead one of the day. Apple knocking on the door of 176. It, it, so I'm yeah, telling you, it, really, it broke. It really strong. Oh, it did. 176.01 HOD. So wow, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I, I was. I, how dare I? It, it should be a little bit tougher. It should have thicker skin. So, Apple, you know, you're going to get offended if Adair calls you the dead one. Like, what kind of a... Uh, yeah, you know, I'm sure I'm sure it's fine on the day, Adair. Yeah. Uh, it's all good. Guys, not much else uh, to really discuss here. We did we did make a new high a day on NVIDIA, but we're kind of retracing off that level. It was around 898 or thereabouts, technically 897.96. Um, and now, but still... Still having that magnetic effect that the OB, the one that Kenobi always talks about, um, on the EMA. That's the 10 EMA over here. So dip trades on NVIDIA have been working. Uh, let's look at some other names. Um, 
Oh, I don't know if you noticed this either, but your, your friend Tesla has been doing a thing here at Pivots as well. So it's been holding that 171 or thereabouts to the downside and the high side about 172 and a quarter, but putting in lower highs. Definitely about that. So keep your, keep your eye on that. Tesla did have a good catalyst yesterday and that help it, helped it pump up off the bottom there from 166. We made a high yesterday of 174 and change, almost 175. Uh, the catalyst was that they're gonna increase the price of the Model Y in the United States by a thousand bucks. And in, in uh, the Eurozone, they're gonna increase it by about 2,000 euros. You know, as per usual, there was kind of like a counter catalyst today to the positive catalyst. We, we heard uh, rumblings this morning about ketamine use uh, by Elon Musk, this and the other. We're not going to get into it, but that has a way of obviously affecting Tesla stock price. So we'll have to see exactly where Tesla ends up on the day. Right now, it's kind of in the mean between the low and the high yesterday, kind of hanging out right there at Pivots over here at 171 and a third. Uh, TSLA, I don't want to say dead money on the day. It's down 1.4, but uh, a bit of an undiscernible trend. About five minutes left on the show, Adara, uh, as we wind down uh, how to trade here. I just want to give everybody an idea of what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Uh, so give me, an, uh, give me a second here just to load up the lesson. I think we will be doing fibs tomorrow. So it's not I think called. It is fib day. Yeah, it's not called fib day. We're not calling it that. It's called, one second here if I can load it, the measured pullback move. So I've actually read about this in technical analysis before. We're going to use Fibonacci's for the, uh, for the assessment, but we're talking about pullbacks all week. Tomorrow we will be using fibs for something called the measured move pullback. So make sure to hang out with Adair and I tomorrow. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel, 11 o'clock every day, and we'll be talking about that. Yeah, and also as Neil says here, it's not a lie. They are doing fibs. <laughs> I'm going to clap that one because we that know was good. that, that was is good. my, okay, my Neil. type of vibe you, there. Also, um, Tesla, yeah, I did. I feel like I did treat the stock with a little bit of neglect, La. Um, I, I kept saying I wanted to look at that 17160 area that I was playing with earlier. A couple pops, you know, Solo Cristo said, do you have any beak wetters in the Cybertruck? And I did earlier. This is a name that I definitely should have been looking at more. When I was like, what was I doing dancing with IWM when I could have been hopping back into that, the, the, uh, this stock there? But, yeah, this is Fair. a nice look. We're going to have to see... Um, yeah, you're right, though, that Tesla with pivots was, was gorgeous. But also what's gorgeous is we could be three cents of the money in XPeng. So that would be um, really nice indeed. I would be pleased as punch. I took this with more shares. That's why I'm kind of, you know, a stock like we just got filled. Oh. There, so I got really excited because I this is not a type of stock I trade a lot. So, yes, I realized nice. I initially said I was going to wait for 10 tens. Then I noticed we were kind of dancing off this 90 MA a bit. And I said, Adara, you need to be a little bit more okay. You took some more shares. So, honestly, this is not a trade that I really feel the need to hold into the afternoon. A, because I don't really trade past the midday. B, because I don't know how much more XPeng is really going to give you. You know, we talk about this a lot yep. here as well on the show. A lot of these Chinese ADRs, whatever move they're going to give you, is going to kind of die out in the morning. We don't have a ton of volume oh. here happening in XPeng. We're falling down a little bit, so let's see if we get that XPeng in this name. So I think that would be, um, I think that would be a nice look. But, um, yeah, yeah, I just we'll want to build on see. a point you said there oh, with respect you. to the Chinese ADRs. You bring up a really good point is that typically what we see are these ADRs really moving nicely. The meat of the move for these Chinese ADRs typically happens in the pre-market, which is unsurprising because if you assume Asian traders are trading North American markets on these Asian names, well, then that would be when they would be trading it, when it's still uh, appropriate time there. But the thing is, I would say more often than not, just for my observation and not financial advice, but more often than not, they do fade a big move. Nary will I actually see an ADR run uh, to the high side um, during regular market hours. Baba, I think, definitely would, would be the exception to that. There are definitely, definitely exceptions, but what I noticed for some of these EVs, J, um, XPEV, NEO, Lee, et cetera, is that they have a fantastic move uh, in the pre-market, and then typically it's a, it's a fade most of the day. There have been exceptions for Lee Auto. I've seen Lee run aggressively during the day, but uh, a lot of the move is faded, uh, Adara, so... I don't know, that could be a possible ARB for some people who are looking for arbitrage opportunities. That could be interesting to look at there. So before we uh, sign off here and send to the big kahunas, I just want to sh uh, show a couple of these small cap gappers 
that have been able to work their way above, back above the volumated average price. I'm talking about you, NKGN. Yes, making its way back into that 280, 275 area. It'll have to close above here for it to be back in my good books. It's not just enough to quickly wick above the volumated average price. You got to stay above there and then you become tradable again. So keep eyes on NKGN. SOUN also providing an interesting opportunity here. It printed a new high. 875 and it's putting in higher lows off that eight and a quarter defend eight and a quarter that was where we closed off yesterday so use that level as support quite well uh keep your eye on soun as well works not tradable in my opinion neither is lycy lic why they're both below the volume weighted average price just want to cover those small cap gappers uh and i'll send it to you yeah, I can't believe the time always flies when you're having fun so in these markets. Today. And yeah, this was a, a congrats on those NVDL trades because there were no NVDLs taken on that. It was only <laughs> NVDWs. But yeah, all jokes aside, you had really nice beak wetters there on that name. And honestly, something I want to try trading more as well because NVDA yesterday chewed me up, spit me out, whatever um, negative. Both idiom you want to make there but today we just took it with small share size i think though the other solution i really appreciate that you keep bringing this one up is taking the nvda uh nvdl nvds nvdx um also x paying might be giving uh you know a little bit of pain here we're we're a penny out of the money on this or two pennies out of the money either way i'm going to punch out of this once the midday ends which occurs in about 45 seconds uh we had a great time everybody thank you so much adam to lose uh, for the support we love being here this has been um, a really fun trade. Apple still climbing, says uh, Frank Jones. Frank Jones, Frank Rabone. Jones, the one and only. Yeah, a lot of um, positive uh, you know, sentiment towards that Apple run, and I already apologize to that stock for underestimating its ability to run today. But nice look. Yeah, Ponzi Fonzi mentioning Apple as well, so shout out to that. Tomorrow, though, we will. We're not fibbing. There will be some fibs. <laughs> so I'm um, really excited to see what happens here. Thank you, you all. You're a rock star. Uh, we're always happy to be here, talk these markets, hype up these markets. Yeah, baby. Um, um, and you know, the, who's, no one's more hyped about the markets here than Neil and Sean. Oh, yeah. Heading into the afternoon, Sean was excited. Sean and Neil both have some trades uh, to discuss. Maybe we'll hear about some Micron, we'll hear about some coin. But we'll see you tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. For now, though, Brendan's at the big desk. Hey, guys, yeah, welcome in. Two o'clock, a couple hours left in the session uh, as we head into those two hours.